What's going on, everybody? We're here. We're live. We're back with a Poker Live podcast. You guys know it's been a it's been a big year for the podcast. We've done a total of one with my man Tonka, but we're getting back after it. And today, after today, we're having Donnie Peters on tomorrow, one of the best tournament players in the entire world. The man has been crushing it. Uh, next week, we're gonna have two more podcasts on. Not quite sure uh, of exactly what the dates are. And um, and yeah, that's really it, man. Check iTunes, search Poker Life. I'll be updating on there. Joining me today, guys, is a young man. You know, I, th I think we can call this guy. He's one of the pioneers of discovering these online poker cheating scandals back in the day with Altman Bet and with Absolute Poker. Uh, he's a man who worked for the Poker Star security team enforcing TOS. You guys know we love terms of service around here. We advocate. Who knows what we have a kid terms of service around here, but he's also involved with the brand new poker site called Coin Poker, which is going to be a cryptocurrency site that's kind of in the works. I know it's uh I know it's in some form right now. I don't exactly know what stage it's in. We're gonna find out more about that. He is the head of security for that site, too. So is a man who is uh I'm gonna call him a security expert when it comes to the online poker world and also very involved with the potential future of online poker and trying to battle all this out of line activity with the bots out there. And we know the bots are, are trying to take over online poker. We're joined by my man. Also, by the way, he does have one of the nicest beards I've ever seen in my life. And uh, we're joined by my man, Michael Josem over from the Isle of Man right now. What's up, Michael? Welcome to the podcast, my friend. G'day, Joey. Thank you very much for having us. And uh, congratulations on your first, well, this is first or maybe your second podcast since you were one of the finalists at the, uh, at the American Poker Awards. Unfortunately, you didn't quite make it, but you know, my vote was with you. So, Maybe thank you, year. Michael. Yeah, this is my first podcast since then. It turns out, I know they, they said that I crushed. That's what I heard. I, I crushed the podcast really hard the previous couple of years, and then last year, the second half of the year, I kind of took off. So they said they were going to reward someone else. So I definitely understand. It's only pretty much my fault. I could have, I could have got after it harder, like I usually do. But I, you know, I got, I got a little out of line last summer at World Series of Poker, and then it just carried over for the rest of the year. So, so yeah, and I see all people out there in the chat, guys. What's going on, everybody? Welcome back to the live streams here. And by the way, did you see Michael? So I, I, you've seen these recent videos I've been putting out on the America's Card Room with all the cheating and lack of security that that's going on over there. Have you seen any any of those videos at all? Yeah, yeah. I certainly followed. A, a, I've seen a few of them. Um, certainly concerning. You know, it's that's dodgy. You know what you're what, what you're talking about, and uh, and you know players deserve answers. Well, Michael, last night they start issuing refunds. So. I, the, if you guys play on ACR, play on Winning Poker Network, please check your emails. They've been sending out refunds. I've seen as high as $1,800, I believe. And I've seen a bunch of different players playing Nolan Hold'em and Potlin Omaha. We put out an official video about that. But the refund stage of things, Michael, obviously you being involved with the security side of things, how did you guys, like, how do you handle the refund side of things? Because you know, no information is really released about, about who was doing what or what was going on or whatever. So when you're on the security side of things and you're thinking about, okay, let's do refunds, what, what, is, that, what is the process like for that? Sure. So look, I, I guess, you know, just for the benefit of your listeners, I did work at, for some time at PokerStars, almost 10 years or something. Um, but, you know, I don't I don't want to talk about what, what they did. And, you know, I'm probably still bound by various some sort of non-disclosure of their, their secrets. And so I don't want to talk about their specific um, programs. But let's say hypothetically, if in the future I was to run an online poker site, um, hypothetically speaking, um, mm -hmm. what I think is really important is that you treat your customers fairly. and uh, And so that requires... You know, providing if you make a mis make make a mistake as a as a, as a uh, operator, then I think that's it's right to provide refunds to people who are harmed by unfair uh, behaviour. And so, so I think it, you need to have those two parts. One is you need to be harmed, and you need to have it unfairly harmed. Um, and so, you know, things such as, for example, uh, playing underage could be a situation where someone breaks the rules and does the wrong thing. But other opponents are not really harmed by that. Um, whereas I think, you know, you have to be harmed in some sort of EV, some sort of, you know, damage that hurts happens to you as a victim. Um, and it needs to happen unfairly. So, for example, if you play against someone who who is better at poker than you are, obviously, then you don't deserve a refund um, or you don't deserve any compensation for that because it wasn't unfair. Uh, and so in those situations, you know, the, you've got to come up with, a as an operator, uh, got to come up with a, with a fair way of, of providing compensation and you know I don't, I don't know what acr uses uh, unfortunately they're based in costa rica and you know there's no costa rican gaming authority that that'll review this there's no you know there's no credible you know independent legal 
you know, court system that you can appeal to as a customer. And so, you know, when you play on these off offshore sites like ACR or winning poker, it's, you know, it's not going to be, you, if you do have a dispute, you're at, at their mercy. Uh, and so I think there's a real lesson there to distinguish what some dodgy operators do with those that are, that are doing the right thing. And so, you know, um, that's, you know, I think it's important for you as, as, a, as a leader of the community, Joey. Um, you know, we don't want, not all poker sites are bad. Um, some are, some are not. And so, you know, for your customers, for, for your viewers, um, mm -hmm. you got to distinguish, I think, a little bit between those two. Yeah, I think I know how they figured out refunds. Here's what I believe happened, Michael. I, I mean, I don't know if you've seen this this technique, but I believe they they put their their, their hand right here and they just started uh, hitting names on the keyboard and then they came on some accounts and then they just they did that again for the amount. I, I would I don't know what that I mean, listen, I don't know. Their security hey. team, Michael, they need to pay you a million dollars and just bring you down there. This, I don't know how much could be the, this you. Could be the they need to give you a million dollars and bring you, Yeah. They need to give you a million dollars and bring you down there and say, Michael, can you help fix this fucking situation? Because I mean, I don't know if you'd even if that even be something you do. Obviously you mentioned unregulatedness and right now you're currently involved in the coin poker site, which I believe is who, who's the, so the coin poker? I know Tony G is associated with that. And there are some other names on there that I recognize from, they used to work with poker stars. Why don't you talk a little bit more about what coin poker is and kind of what to expect sure. from this site. And is this have potential to be a, a really good option for players looking to play cash games or, or looking to play tournaments? Yeah, really. So coin poker is fundamentally, it's, it's an online poker site that, that you'd be familiar with. Um, but instead of playing games in US dollars or euros or pounds or whatever, you pay play in this currency called um, CHIP, C-H-P. Uh, and, uh, and in that sense, uh, what that allows is it allows you to, as a, as a customer, you can, you know, you don't need to worry about a lot of the, the uh, cashing out and depositing uh, challenges that, that some online gaming sites um, play. Um, there's a slightly different regulatory environment that applies in different uh, different uh, countries and uh, and so in that sense one of the things that that I think that coin poker you know is trying to do is to not necessarily compete you know with with poker stars or with you know full tilt poker or with party poker and so on um, it um, allows people to play you know for a non fiat currency uh, in a um, in a um, you know a slightly different uh, uh, environment. So we're not competing with part. We're not competing with party poker or any of those sites like that. Is that yeah, not well, the plan? Well, perhaps you know potentially in time, but but you know currently uh, you know it's only just launched in the last few weeks, and so and so it's really you know very popular with the um, you know a whole bunch of uh, poker players and with enthusiasts in the cryptocurrency uh, world. But I think it's fair to say that cryptocurrency and you know and, and that that side of things is not really a mainstream. Not, 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 not quite yet a mainstream activity. And, you know, in time, you know, there will be, like, you know, I hope this will spread and will grow. But, you know, let's also be realistic. Like, you know, launched just a few weeks ago and, you know, you gotta, gotta, got to walk before you can run. Uh, and so, you know, trying to, trying to go too far um, too quickly uh, can be super dangerous. And so, you know, you take it slowly. Um, so I guess for, for from your standpoint, being the head of security, what are, what's sort of your mission with, with what you do? Are you kind of just trying to, just monitor the games and kind of look out for for what people might be doing, what exploits they might be doing, potential bots or potential collusion out there. Sure. So yeah, look, my, my role in that is is you know firstly communicating to and from players about about various issues that that might arise so that we get the right policies and procedures um, uh, in place going forward. And so, for example, in, in recent weeks, you know, we've published a series of articles on the Coin Poker uh, Medium uh, channel. Uh, medium.com forward slash coin poker or whatever it is. Um, the uh, and and a lot of what that is is about listening to what different customers want and what the different community members of the community want uh, with regards to things such as uh, user ID changes, uh, storing of hand histories, you know, rules on prohibited software and so on. Uh, and so in that sense, I think that you know that's that's a much more of my involvement there strategic uh, rather than being involved. You know, as you say, on a day-to-day -day basis in individual cases, um, and so in that sense, you know, I think that that when you're we're you know at the very foundational stage of, of coin poker, uh, it takes a little bit of time to build the foundation right, so that then when it grows in time, uh, you have a good you know solid foundation. You know, you don't want to have a have it have it all built along uh, up on paper, and so if that falls down, then you know you know customs will be quite unhappy. And so for, you know, for you as a poker player, you know, what we've been hearing from players is that they want, you know, to get it right. And, you know, it certainly won't be right in the first week or the first month, um, but it's about, uh, you know, taking it, 
taking it slow, making the right decisions, and getting the right st strategy in place to to you know, make it, let it grow. Yeah, I mean, that that definitely makes a lot of sense because it's kind of like you want to you want to have your fundamentals, whatever it is that you do. You want to have your fundamentals down pretty well yeah. before you start sort of building out and expanding on more complicated or more advanced sort of strategies or whatever it is you're in. If you're in business, you're building a poker strategy, if you're running a poker site, because I think what could happen is you take a look at America's Card Room, who's neglected security, winning the winning poker network, America's Card Room, there's a bunch of other skins on there, but they've neglected security for so long. And now they get to a point like this where they're like, well, I, I don't, what am I supposed to do? And it sounds like what you're saying is you want to take it, you know, kind of just take slow, take that building part slow, really focus and make sure that you you sort of have a good understanding of what might be, you know, what might be getting a lot out of line with the site or what might be issues or what might be problems and then fix those up at this stage rather than have it to a point where you have a ton of players in the site and a ton of action on the site and then trying to reverse a bunch of stuff and fix it from there. Yeah, exactly. And I think that one of the things that I've been most impressed about the coin poker people is that they've uh, got a real commitment to protecting player funds first and foremost. Uh, and so if you think about it over the 15 years of the, of the online poker world, you know, first with Poker Spot, and then you know later on with Absolute Poker, Ultimate Bear, Full Tilt Poker, um, and then one of the a few Purple Lounge, um, and then PKR. Um, a whole bunch of them have essentially gone bust because they didn't have player funds safe and secure. Uh, right. And so one of the things that I've been really impressed, and one of the great opportunities of the whole blockchain uh, um, public ledger um, side of the technology, is that. The coins, the chips that you're playing in, are very, very verifiably there, and that you can see whether or not the site has the where those tokens are going back and forth. Um, and you know, just think of how much, how many more hundreds of millions of dollars are being players' pockets today. You know, if party po if not, not, not sorry, part that was a mistake. I don't mean to say party, but if Full Tilt Poker or if Ultimate Bet or if Poker Spot or if PKR had published their bank accounts day in day out literally instantly, you know, over the last 15 years. Uh, and so, you know, I think that's, you know, the first and most important building block because, you know, if you don't have customer money to begin with, then, you know, it doesn't matter if you get all the compensation in the world if, you, if it's not in the bank account, right? So so I think that's the real that's the real thing that sets the new crypto world of coin poke and the cryptocurrency operators apart from the rest is that, that level of transparency when it comes to the money. Yeah, it does seem like there are other crypto per cryptocurrency poker sites in the works i believe luke shorts uh aka the english pigeon aka i beast everything i know he's him and and jason mo and uh i'm about to cts i know they're involved in another one i think there's like another one with dan coleman and brian rast are involved in too then we have coin poker so it, it does seem like we are going to have some alternative options outside right. of, of the, the u.s markets i don't know exactly so is coin poker can you play in this site uh, from the USA without breaking TOS, or is this just a rest of the world site, or, or where exactly do they offer for, for players to play if they want to play for real money on there? Yeah, that's a super good question. I don't know it off the top of my head. Um, and so while I, while I, ch you know, chat with you, you know, I don't want to say anything that's wrong to your customers. Um, mm. And so I'd have to get back to you on that one. So sorry. That's okay. That's okay. Yeah. And I think with, with other cryptocurrency sites, I know that, um, well, I know people played from from all over the place in the cryptocurrency site. It's kind of an appealing thing about it. There's always a lot of action, uh, very weird action. I mean, I don't know. The whole entire security, uh, the security aspect, when I think about some of the older cryptocurrency sites, I'm always kind of sketched out a little bit playing on there just because, I mean, I don't know. Is it any is it any more sketchy than playing on some of the options we have now in the USA with Ignition or with ACR or with some of the, the browser sites like uh, the American sites or the Chinese sites or any of those sites? I mean, there's just so many of these sketchy options out there that... I don't know, in a way you sort of have to figure out as a player, you know, I mean, I don't know, how do you like, how do you look at the current online poker world and, and just the state of things as they are right now from a security standpoint? Yeah, look, I think it's, I think you're absolutely spot on. It's tough to to separate um, the different uh, operators. And so that's why, you know, I guess it's incumbent on you or I or, or other opinion leaders is to differentiate and and to have a bit of nuance between those that are, that are, you know, more credible and, and, and not. And so at the moment, I'm beginning to work on a project quite separate from this coin poker thing, which will, you know, hopefully allow a consumer to distinguish between, you know, what, what's right and what's not. And so, you know, I read an academic study in the in the UK uh, you know, a few years ago now, uh, but it talked about how, uh, you know, a lot of people survey existing poker players or existing online gamblers or existing, you know, bingo players or whatever and ask about what drives them. But this took a slightly different study and uh, it uh, took a slightly different uh, tack. And it asked people who were not 
current customers? What are the issues that are you know, preventing you from playing or taking part? Uh, and the number one issue by far is like 62% um, of all of people who are not said they don't trust the site, they don't trust the operation. And so that is pretty consistent whether across online poker, online bingo, online sports betting, online slots. Uh, and so, yeah, I, I, I think you're, you're, you're entirely spot on there uh, in that you got to, you know, we got to find a way as consumers um, to differentiate between the two. And that's that's why I got interested in this absolute poker and ultimate bet thing. You know, what was that like um, 10, 10, 10 or 11 years ago now, uh, back when I was young and innocent. Uh, and in the time, you know, I was working in politics in Australia and, you know, for a member of parliament and I had nothing to do with, with online poker as a job. But, but I thought, and I believe still to this day, that if you inform customers properly and uh, you give them more information, that then they can make uh, better decisions about where they play. Uh, and so, you know, hopefully this is a project that will be able to get a little bit of support from various different operators, uh, you know, in the poker world, but also outside the poker world, um, you know, to allow them to, you know, to make their case to the consumers about why they're safer and secure. Um, because you're right, there are some dodgy operators, you know, there are, you know, of the most obvious ones are the ones who have run off with uh, customer money. Um, but, yeah. you know, God knows how many people are still there today. Uh, and so one of the things that, that uh, here in the, well, not here in the UK, but in the British Isles, the United Kingdom has a, has a pretty good um, uh, mechanism for allowing online poker sites and online gambling sites in general to store and to and to secure player funds using different uh, mechanisms. Uh, and of the major poker operators, you know, to one, one of the things I was really quite surprised to discover uh, just a few weeks ago as part of doing research for this new project uh, was to find that it was only PokerStars is the only one that has the highest level of player fund protection according to the UK Gambling Commission. Um, and so yeah, even, even when there are operators who are otherwise legitimate and otherwise upstanding, you know, I, don't, I certainly don't want to cast aspersions on 888 or Party Poker or other big operators in the in the, in the UK market. Um, I was surprised as someone who's worked in this industry for 10 years that there are other ones who are, you know, such big brands but don't offer up that same level of security. Uh, and so I think that one of the things that's challenging as part of that is that some online uh Operators, they don't want us to talk about security. They don't want to talk about these things because it's certainly scary. You know, if you have a conversation about, hey, hey, bots are, you know, we're doing A, B, and C to combat bots, you know, then there's some percentage of customers say, well, who didn't even think about bots and say, oh, I don't want to, I don't want to play right, anymore. Yeah. And there's a great big chunk who are, who are nervous about this, and I think there's an opportunity to inform them and to, and to work with, uh, to, to make a better world for us. And so, you know then you know for those people who are already playing poker and already well sophisticated and well well knowledgeable about these things um they will hopefully benefit by having uh you know some sort of a op situation whereby uh, operators are held to a higher standard than they are currently yeah, you mentioned bots and obviously bots has been something where we've always known bots were going on you know, there i mean this is far back as I don't know. I feel like since online poker has been started, there's you know kind of the more recent botting things happen with the PLO bots on, on Poker Stars that that were winning at the one two and two four or two and the two five are some of the biggest winners there. There's been bots on other sites that have been banned. There's been bots on Maris Carterum. There's suspected bots now on on still on there and on on Party Poker and you know they talk about bots being pretty much being everywhere. And it seems like from from my information, when I've been talking with the people who work on the dark side, as we might call it, who are the who are design the bots and create the bots and run the servers that the bots run on and 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 build these profiles that the bots play on, it seems like these bots is probably one of the biggest issue moving forward with online poker. And they're only going to keep getting better and better in terms of being able to be better players and to be able to evolve and evade detection. And then from your side of things, I guess what's your now, what's your stance or what's your take on bots and just the idea of combating them? And do you think it's possible to to have a big impact and get rid of these bots? Sure. So I think I think there's two two halves of of making it a, a good bot. And one of the one of the points that you make in your when you were saying that is you're talking about bots getting better and better. But so is the defense of the other side. And so right. essentially, all security, all life, uh, is about having a situation whereby um, the costs to an attacker as it were, um, are too high to be profitable. And, you know, and that fundamentally um, will substantially give you a secure system in that for you as a, as a, as a, you know, living in your house, your home is secure to a reasonable level against the threats it's going to encounter. But let me give you the hot tip. If the, the US Second Army starts rolling tanks down, down your street, your house is stuffed, right? And, and so in that sense, one of the, 
issues is that you're right that there will be advances in artificial intelligence. But the second half of the defense of, of, of bots is that um, it's not just about making the in-game decisions, but it's also about how a bot interacts with the uh, online poker site. And so the, on that defensive side, you can continue to invest and to grow and to make those defenses. And you know, to, to answer your question, number three, will there ever be a time when there are no bots in online poker? Unequivocally, I say no, no such time will ever exist. But what you've got to do is, you know, make it as hard as possible. You know, as, as an operator, what you've got to do is you've got to make it, a, you know, as hard as is reasonably possible um, so that, you know, the people who are smart enough to, to develop these ways to, you know, these super amazing ways that they, uh, you know, simply go do something else with their time in the sense of if it's going to cost you, for example, $100,000 to make a bot, but it's only going to give you $1,000 worth of profit, then obviously the people with the $100,000 worth of, you know, capital and time and resources are going to go do something else with their time. And so while it's, it's technically true to say that artificial intelligence is always improving, um, you know, I don't, I don't think that that necessarily means it's, it's always going to be harder and harder um, for an honest player. Uh, and that, uh, you know, there's a, you know, a lot of people right throughout the world from, you know, if, even outside poker who are looking at ways of detecting, you know, more and more intensive ways of, uh, of separating uh, bots from real players. We're coming for you, bots. Listen, bots. I might, I'm, I don't know, man. I might just say, fuck it. I'm going to work security somewhere. I'm, I'm dedicating my life to battling the bots, even though I'm not going to win. And y'all bots are going to, going to send those crazy dogs from that one video I posted. They're going to, those dogs are going to come after me and take me down. That's okay, man. I'm, I'm, I'm ready to, uh, I'm ready to, I'm ready to battle the bots. I like playing, I like playing with bots. I'm going to be honest with you, Michael. I feel like bots, uh, I feel like bots help make you better at poker when you know that they're bots and there's three of them at a table because then it's really impossible to win. So if you can somehow beat three bots at one table, you got You know you got to be doing something pretty right. So from that standpoint, yeah, well, Michael, I like... If you want to go play with bots, then you go play with bots. <laughs> What's on your own? That's, that's not for not my world in that... Uh, we need you know, a bot like, network. One of the things Listen, that make... We need a bot network. I want to play on the bot network. I want to play, on the bot network. I want to play against the bots. <laughs> There is a, there is a, I don't know if it's annual or biannual, but but there is certainly an ongoing uh, uh, bot poker tournament, um, and so where they get the, you know, the whole bunch of academics, they get their bots and they play against each other, uh, and they play like a million hands in a, like a minute or something, because obviously they're running at full at full speed, um, you know, they don't need to wait, you know, normal Joey thinking time, um, but rather they just blast through like a million hands in a few minutes and so on. They just let the algorithms go back and forth at each other. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, it's a, yeah, a whole lot of research in uh, in this, you know, because people are using poker bots not to play six max no limit hold'em or six max PLO, of course, um, but rather they're using it to learn about how uh, artificial intelligence can do some interesting things with hidden information and so on. So yeah, uh, if you look up like a bot world championship or something on 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 your Google, you know, wow. A million hands. Yeah. That's that. That somehow beats my yeah, record. Don't quote me on those exact. Don't, don't quote, quote me on those exact numbers. But yeah, wow, fame a million. Man, that's fifty thousand hands I played. I thought that was a lot, and now I know the bots are out there playing millions of hands. I, I, I shout out to the bots. Shout out to everybody in chat. We see a lot of good comments out there. Hamilton Ellis says it seems like only refunds representing what I mentioned earlier have become to PLO. So they're refunding guys, and I'll put out a video about this uh, over the next couple of days. Their ACR is refunding PLO and Nomad Holden players right now. And I don't know if sit and goes or multi-table tournaments players are being refunded, but um, but you can follow along with that on two plus two. I'm going to start a thread in a little bit about it. And um, and yeah, uh, James Sozolkolipiak says, "What's the best?" I didn't say that right. Obviously, what is the best way as a player to detect a bot while playing? Does that feel like does that give away too much? I guess from the strategy side of things, from the from from your point of view, to talk about how how players can maybe detect that they might be playing with a bot. So. I think that the amount of information that a player has into is is so incredibly small that you're better off you spending your time and attention for mo in most cases to other things. You're better off, you know, it's much more profitable for you as a player to, you know, to analyze your own play than to try and figure out whether or not someone's a bot. Um, I, I'm, ag I'm again hitting up against the limits of what I can talk about poker stars but certainly you know from what I, I i read from other people in the industry um you know the vast majority of allegations of bot usage by by individual players are the vast majority they're actually just humans um, and humans do weird weird things so you know you remember a few years ago there was this guy rso3 rso3 who's playing up to 100 tables at once uh, and so that was uh, the most uh, 
you know, at that time, that was bizarre. And Rain Khan, you know, 10 years earlier, um, you know, he mm. was playing the then crazy four tables at once. Uh, and people back then couldn't figure out, how is this guy doing playing so much? Uh, and there's a great YouTube video of him playing like four or five or six tables at once uh, with the Eye of the Tiger playing in the background. Uh, it's probably still on YouTube today. Uh, but, you know, in terms of the, the information that a player has to figure out who's a bot, there's such a small information. Whereas, you know, look at it from the point, point of view of an online poker operator, they can see so much more. They can look at a whole lot more. Um, and so, you know, my suggestion is, you know, if, if, I, if I was a customer and, you know, I'm now not 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 employed but full-time by any, uh, you know, significant online poker operator, um, you know, I play in my spare time. And if I ever suspected something, and you know, I suspect that's unlikely that I would, but I'd send an email to the, to the site, um, let them know, hey, I have this concern, and uh, let them investigate because they have so much more information than you or I ever will uh, as customers. And so, you know, in that sense, you know, I, I think that for most people, you know, I accept it's a risk and, you know, it's one that online poker operators need to face and to need to overcome, but it's such a small one compared to so many bigger issues. Yeah, I think when it kind of comes to the idea, I think Joseph's pretty right about if you're going to think about put your energy, you only have so much energy you can put into things when you're playing poker. And I think you're much better off putting that into other things and trying to get better at your game than, than sort of like going crazy in your mind and worrying about, oh, is this person this, this person that. You know, if you're really worried that someone might be something like that, first of all, don't have them sit to your right because they're probably, if they are, they're probably not making any mistakes. So you want to have them kind of to your left, but just leave the table and go to a new table, play drop lower stakes, or just try to go away, play a new site. If you're that worried about someone potentially doing that. And I feel like it can drive you crazy in your mind because as Michael said, you only have so much information on these players and there's really no way you can, you can hundred percent definite prove these things on your own. So you can submit something to security besides that. But either way, if you start, once you get it in your mind, it just drives you nuts. And uh, yeah. if, when, if you're, if you're, if you're driven nuts when you're playing, well, you're not going to be playing your best strategy. You're not going to be thinking about how to get better at your strategy. You're going to be thinking about this stuff over here. So I feel like in the long term, it's just better to kind of block it out of your mind if, if that's possible, which is something I've always done. And then just focus on your actual game and what you're doing and executing your strategy. Yeah. And so, so. Look, the, the, you know, fundamentally the decision you have as a, as a customer, is hey, if you're not happy with the performance of your of the people of the company that's providing you the online poker, go somewhere else. You know, let let the company that you're playing at know that detecting and, and preventing bots is important to you as a customer. Um, and if you're unhappy with them, go somewhere else. And it's and it's through that competition that you know having that choice that I think that is the best opportunity for us as customers in the long term to you know to reduce that risk. You know, because poker is is a you know I believe anyway a a a beautiful game because it's a test of so many human attributes so in right. the same way that 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 running the 100 meter sprint at the olympics is a test of human strength and speed it's not a bulk test of how well your body can process drugs and so in the same way poker is such a wonderful test of the mind of of courage of logic of mathematics of perception and so on it's not a test of your programming skills and so you know if you're you know, if that's important to you and you feel the same way, let the online poker site know because, you know, they should be on the same side as you, you know, because there are very few online poker sites want bots. And so, you know, they want to provide fair or honest games. Customers want fair and honest games. And, you know, it's going to, you know, let them know that it's important to you. Here, you hear what he said, guys. If you play at any any site, Coin Poker, you need to send Michael at Michael Joseph on Twitter. You need to send him a mention every single day for the rest of your life and you need to send them an email at least once a day voicing your concerns about what's happening on that site and maybe just tell them what, what you think's happening on every other site too i don't know give him give him maybe he can forward this to information to the to the powers that be a uh, poker stars or somewhere else so there you go he said it himself i didn't say that he said it himself so please i already, send have, him the, I already have this guy on, i already have this guy on twitter who does this every every week or so i, I assume you know he I don't know what he's up to, but let's just say late on a Friday or a Saturday night, um, I get like a barrage of mentions from some clown on the, on Twitter. Um, <laughs> uh, you know, in what I think is somewhat a similar situation, man, maybe he's been a bit been a bit thirsty or whatever. But uh, you know, don't don't mention me, don't at me. Um, go, if, go anyone, with, you know, if anyone if anyone will at Michael about this for the every day for the next month, I will give them a reward. I do not know what it'll be, but I, I'm I'm going to put a bounty on there potentially on this because I want to see it happen. So uh, Barry Carter, oh Barry Carter in the chat, shout out Barry Carter out there, man. Barry's doing a lot of great so work. Barry. 
does a lot of really great writing out there. I feel like he takes a very unique angle on a lot of the stuff that he writes too. So I love reading what he says. He asks a really great question. Is that cert certificate on the wall not straight? It's tilting the shit out of me. That's true. Is the certificate on the back of your wall, is that straight or is that crooked? Oh, it is, it is slightly. Let me... Let me uh... Uh, whoops, sorry. So the difficulty here is that the wall is that better? I don't I didn't the I wall, didn't notice it. I don't know. Okay, yeah, so the difficulty is that the wall is actually not flat. So it's like a I don't know how to describe it, but yeah, like there's a corner of the wall there. So sorry, look at my pretty face instead, Barry. That's um, I'm sure it will distract you. If you want um asymmetricalness, then check out my face because Damn, man. Now I see, man, is that, listen, ladies in the chat, I know we have a lot of ladies that watch my videos. Let me know what you think about Michael Joseph's beard and his asymmetrical face. Is it GTO or is it GTFO? Please let us know in the chat. I know we get a lot of female demographic around here. And uh, yeah, man, I'm always happy for all the females out there to watch the show. Thank you for all your support. Someone mentioned in the chat earlier, I would look good with a beard. I'm sorry I cannot grow a beard like Michael in my entire life. Well, you're starting. You're starting with one. It's like a, it's like a baby beard. Um, you this know, is almost as far as it goes. I'm going to be honest yeah. with you. I don't know how. You, I, I don't know how long does that take you? Like one day to grow? What, how, what's the process like for growing? Uh, this? No, this is a couple of weeks. But look, I'm sure when you go through puberty, you'll go through be able to have one as well. You know, it'll be. I mean, that's what my mom luscious. kept telling me for years. I, I I've been waiting for this. I I hit 30. I'm saying, okay, like, can I hit the puberty? What's happening here? And but I just keep yeah. ending up with with this. That's all I got. I don't know, man. It's just it don't. That's I, awkward. Yeah. Look, uh, I've, I've got a mate of mine. Uh, he's. Um, he reckons he's going to have a beard. He currently can grow it almost as well as you, but he's due to have a beard like this in about 17 generations' time. So, unfortunately, you could just be in the same boat. I but, think I am. Know. But people told me there's there's some drugs out there I can potentially take. I don't know if I want to be putting drugs that on my face. I don't know what happens. Is it going to like? I, I'm I'm very scared to take a drug where it will give me more hair on my body or face. I just like. Yeah. I, yeah, it's, uh, it sort of comes as a whole package. You know, it's it's it just goes everywhere. So. You know, that's, that's a whole uh, lot of hair I gotta, for us. I got to ask Daniel. Daniel, I know he's he's into hair stuff, so maybe he, he got some words. So. Yeah, I guess his, kinda, his you know, hair's growing so much more wholesome and more fully in uh, recent years. It's remarkable, isn't it? Good I do. Like, I, like his hair. I like his hair now. Shout out, Daniel. Shout out to Daniel yeah. out there. He issued me a free roll. I'll probably talk about that at some point in time in the future here. But, you know, kind of poker stars and Daniel... <laughs> So what do you think about the changes that, that poker stars undergone these past few years when, when Isai Scheinberg, the, the, uh, I guess we can't call him the godfather. He didn't really create online poker, but the godfather of poker stars, they decided to sell the company to David Bezoff, AKA Mr. Insider Trading, uh, to, and, and Amaya as well. So they, they sold it to that company. Obviously the company now has overgone a massive amount of changes. David Bezoff's out as CEO, a new CEO is in, they've changed the name from Amaya to the stars group. And then now they're sort of, I feel like they're rolling back some of their, their aggressive changes they were going on and, and kind of from your point of view, what's your, you know, what's your take on where things are going with poker stars and sort of just the changes that they made over these past bunch of years. Sure. Yeah. Look, I, I, uh, had a, have a great deal of affection for his eye. And I think anyone who meets him and anyone who interacts with him, uh, has the same experience. And he is a man of deep, integrity of deep passion uh, and a deep affection for the game and for the product and for the customers and he was certainly to my mind you know one of the most uh, impressive men that i've ever had the opportunity to meet and so you know forgive me for being not going a bit of downer here but like he's a he's a, a a man who i respect and admire and 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 i think very highly of of him the um and so one of the things when he was leading poker stars, you know, it was always in the top of mind was how do we do things better for customers? How do we make a better product? What's right for the game of poker? Uh, and so, you know, that's why, you know, from the very start, you know, he led the industry in the deployment, firstly of multi-table tournaments, and then invested in the in the myriad of poker tours of the, you know, right across the world, the EPT, the NAPT, the, you know, the... Latin American poker tour, the Asia Pacific poker tour, and then the whole flood of you know regional things, you know, not because they necessarily made sense in the in the immediate future of in the in the, in the immediate short term future, because there's all investment in leading the game, and uh, and these days 
I think poker is in a very different situation. And you know, I'm, I'm I don't I don't really want to talk about poker stars, uh, you know, because you know I used to work there for nine and a bit years, and you know I'm, I you know it's sort of like when you break up with an ex, you don't want to talk about your ex all the time. Like you know, we had a wonderful time together, and I'm very grateful for the time that I spent at poker stars. Um, and and you know, there's certainly still you know a lot of great individuals there. Um, and so one of the things that you know, I think applies to the gaming industry as a whole. And, you know, I acknowledge that, you know, you're mostly focused in poker, but if you look into into the sports betting and casino games and, and poker, you know, right throughout the rest of the world, a whole bunch of the the mind, the mind share of the leaders of the industry have been focused on the various financial wheeling and dealing. And David Bazoff was the worst example of that, in that he, you know, what was, you know, did David Bazoff have a great commitment to no limit you know, no limit hold him. No, no, he did, did not. Did he look? I don't know. Did he even have a PokerStars account before he bought the company? Like, I, no, oh, I do not think so either. Look, I, I, don't, I don't know. Like, he, he might have, he might not have. I, I, you know, but like, that was not a man whose who's mind frame was set around how do we build great value for our customers? Because he came from a very different background. He was, you know, came from Wall Street with the, you know, the wheeling and dealing and the, you know, that, that well, not even Wall Street, but you know that Canadian entrepreneurial, and he brought a very different attitude, different mindset. So his mind, um, you know, was focused very much on on trading and, and and that sort of financial deals. And and one of the things that one of the challenges I think for the online gaming industry as a whole, and this is certainly not a reference, you know, solely to Pokestars, but to the whole industry, is that the industry needs to focus on customers, needs to focus on product. And you know, like yesterday. Um, Yesterday was International Women's Day, and uh, and the leading online poker operator leading the charge to include and to engage women, for example, was Unibet, um, who who ran a series of tournaments right throughout Europe um, with a neat little thing of uh, uh, whereby the queens were ranked higher than kings. Um, you know, flipping it up, switching it around for the day to have a kind of a conversation about how you know women shouldn't necessarily be subordinate to men, and 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 that's great leadership from Unibet. Um, and I think that there's a real opportunity for a business, whether it be Poke Stars or Party Poker or or 888 or whoever, to show some leadership that is focused on, you know, growing the industry and, and, and you know, serving the customers and developing new and exciting product. Uh, that, that's, that's I think, you know, there's a, there's a whole right across the industry of that sort of leadership because people, you know, are focused on mergers and acquisitions rather than focused on great new products. They, they definitely do. I mean, I, I, you mentioned about David Bazoff, his mindset, where he comes from. So, guys, I have a, I've been on a rather deep dive investigation on our young friend David Bazoff and who he's been associated with, his past with Amaya, his past with acquisition, acquis, acquisitions, and uh, his past potential OOL out of line behavior and current out of line behavior, and more on what exactly is going on with this insider trading video coming rather very soon for you guys. So I don't know if people will be interested in that on a, on a big scale, but I think it will give you a lot of added context onto why exactly Amaya made the changes it's made and why Amaya, AKA now the stars group has made the changes that it's been making. And I, I actually, I'm in a place right now, Michael, where I do think that that poker stars is, is not going that same direction that it set out to go after it was acquired by Amaya. I do think that they are, it's, it seems like it's more of a balanced strategy now of they're obviously trying to find more ways to monetize their customer base, but at the same time, they are looking to give back to players and actually provide, a, you know, I don't know exactly what you want to call it, but something that that seems like it benefits the players, seems like it's value to the players and instead of just trying to take every last dollar out of their pants and leave them hung up outside on a 30 foot fucking statue, what they're hanging from the statue. Like they're not trying to do that anymore. It seems like to me. So I am pretty hopeful about what exactly poker stars is doing. And then you mentioned some, you mentioned Unibet and they're doing this uh, with the ladies. And I'm not sure if I'm, if I'm down with the whole entire, let's make the queen bigger than the king. I, I don't know. Like so that's a little thing for a day. Like, you know, you're not, they're not, they're not changing all the rules, but it's like, a, it was just a little start <laughs> to draw attention to this particular show. Like, you know, good on them on for showing a bit of leadership and trying something a bit different. Yeah, I mean, I'm all for definitely trying innovation, trying new things, trying ideas. And I think it's pretty cool. I did see something, an uh, article written. I think Barry actually wrote an article about uh, one of the women, Baltic Blonde, and how they're, she's really involved with the women's side of the poker community as well. And you mentioned Party Poker 888. And I do feel like right now, 
competition is really heating up, man. Party Poker is making a charge. I feel like they're making a charge on all fronts. They expanded their live their live uh, tournament series. They expanded their team. They expanded their content. They expanded everything. And to be honest, I don't know how innovative what they're doing is. It seems like they are just copying PokerStars model from 2009 in a lot of different ways. So maybe we'll see something new from them. 88 Poker is making a push as well. They brought on a lot of sponsored pros. They have a, a, a mixed uh, mix of females and males on their team. And it seems like they're very, they're leveraging the, the females that they have on their team for a lot of their Instagram and their Twitter and social media content. So I, I'm liking what I'm seeing from this competition. I think with competition comes, I mean, it comes to innovation, right? People are going to try new things. Poker Stars is going to have to I mean, maybe not, but they're they're going to hopefully keep making changes for and bringing things to the table that are positive for the players. And I mean, I feel like right now there are some things to worry about in poker, but at the same time, there are a lot of great things happening in poker too. So, I mean, I'm pretty excited to just kind of see what happens here. And obviously with the cryptocurrency poker sites here, really going to hopefully pick up some steam and, and provide an alternative option for people to play on and kind of see exactly how it goes. I'm pretty optimistic about what we have coming here in the next, uh, I don't know, next, next couple of years. Yeah, look, let's hope so. Um, and you know, one of the things that's really interesting to me is that is that you know these days most there was a report by the UK gaming regulator that found now that today um, in 2018 most uh, online gambling takes place on a mobile device. And so in that situation where you have where you're on a mobile device, you know you don't want to be sitting there for you know eight hours playing the Sunday Million because you know, apart from anything else, a you'll run out of battery and b you'll ruin your neck. And so in that sense, you know, I think there's some, you know, opportunity to do some fun and interesting things and, and, you know, hopefully the spinning goes, or, you know, is the, is the port, is the, is the beginning of the, not spinning goes, uh, what is it? Uh, Winamax called them the espresso or espresso um, spinning goes originally. What? Yeah, that's oh, what they were the, called. What, what is the name of these things? Espresso? Espresso? Uh, well, well uh, I can, I can type into Google while I, while I touch you here, but espresso, uh, uh, yeah, as in, yeah, so that they were the they were the the first uh, first uh, event to run the the lottery style uh, random jackpot style sitting goes. Hmm. So yeah, wait, who so, you know, do we know who who invented the spinning goes? Who came up with this format or this idea? Yeah, Winamax did. Uh, you know, this was several years ago now. Yeah, yeah, they they were called espresso espresso sitting go tournaments. Oh. Then, then, a, then a, I think some months later, maybe a year later, a full tilt watch jackpot sitting goes, um, and then you know, sometime later, then uh, Pokestars ran uh, launched uh, spinning spinning goes. Mm. Yeah. So I guess from from your, do you, you like do you like spinning goes? Do you think spinning goes are uh, for for players out there? Well, like the way you ask that question, are they good for players? Is you know, forgive me for picking you up on that. Is that different people want different things? And right. so, you know, you know, like, you know, you go to a restaurant, you have a, have a menu. Uh, and so what I think will be a, the best way to grow a great online poker site is to have a menu of options. And so, you know, I've played a couple of, uh, <coughs> excuse me, uh, a couple of, uh, of uh, spin and goes and, you know, they were fun and, you know, it was a few minutes, but, you know, that wasn't, you know, I'd rather play, um, you know, a few tables of, uh, of, of, uh, uh, what do you call it? the the rush poker uh, instead? Um, you know, because I like playing bang 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 decision decision decision. Um, but you know, different people want different things, and so you know, in a, in a world where fifty three percent of online gambling in the UK these days is done on a mobile device, you know, no one's sitting around for hours on end to you know to for the twelve hours to play a huge multi table tournament. Uh, and so you know, it's a different format, and so it works for different people in different situations. So you know. So you're going to be surprised by the way I feel about spinning goes, but I don't, I don't mind them. I think that, as you mentioned, you know, you, I feel like a lot of players, right, they might not want to play uh, a regular sit and go. They might not want to play a multi-table tournament. Obviously, you mentioned that a lot of the gaming takes place on the phone. And then I think if any of us go outside, I mean, if you go like actually watch, try to spend, if you guys are out there, I'm going to give this challenge to you. Spend like an hour or two when you're out, not on your phone, just watching people and see how many people are just glued to their phone the entire time. And I think that a uh, mobile friendly option like a spin and go, and it does seem like, you know, there was, there was speculation. Is it beatable? Can players win? And it, while the rank is high, this does seem like there are, that is a format where players are winning at. So it is possible to win at the games. If you do dedicate your time to, to trying to get as good as you can at these formats. So now when you start maybe making new formats where the game isn't actually beatable long-term, obviously, then I feel like that's where I, 
have an issue of a game like that being introduced and, and and you just can't win. You're basically, you got no shot at it or only a very, 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 very small number of players can actually beat the game at all long term. So hopefully we, we, we don't go that full route of these complete lottery style games. It does seem like, I mean, it, it, I don't, I don't know if we're going to go that way. I don't, I hope not, but yeah, well, look, at, look at that. That might not be what you or I want, but you know, let me give you a hot tip. There are a lot more people playing roulette than there are poker today, <laughs> and and in that sense, you know, not not everyone wants to win. People want the fun. People play for different reasons, and so right. and so, um, you know, I, I I agree entirely with you. I think it that'd be a very sad path for poker to go down. But you know, who 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 am I or who who is Joey to impose you know his preferences on other people? And so you're right. That's not for me, but that doesn't mean it sucks. Well, yeah, I definitely definitely agree with that. Obviously, you know, <laughs> there are much more people gambling, playing these blackjack, yeah. playing roulette, playing playing crabs, playing bagarat. Oh, maybe not. Oh, bagarat. not even that. You know, look at how many people are playing the various social uh, poker games, like the various where you uh, supposedly it's it's free to play theoretically, but you can buy chips. You know, yeah. that's you, like a hundred percent rake. You know, <laughs> don't worry about your well. Look, is seven or eight percent too high? A hundred percent rake, and people enjoy it because people play for different reasons. Um, and uh, and you know, there's a great there's a great author, uh, a man by the name of Lloyd Melnick. He's a he uh, he works for PokerStars, and he's a blog. Uh, he's been come used to work in the social media space as Zynga, and he's written a whole lot of really great articles that the public anyone can read them. They're on the internet um, about what motivates different people to play different games. And so, you're right for you or I, the 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 opportunity of winning money might be important. Other people enjoy. You know, for the community, other people enjoy for the mental challenge. Different people want different things, and so, and so for for you or I, you're right, hundred percent. Let's you know, let's let's play a super deep stack PLO sometime or whatever. Um, but okay, but, no, 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 not me, because you know, I I like my, what little money I have remaining in my bank account. Um, but uh, <laughs> but uh, but the point being is that like you know, different people want different things, and uh, and so in that sense, in that world, you know, let the people who want to play, you know, the the, the social stuff with the you know where there's 100 percent rake let them do it and uh, each to their own yeah i mean i guess that that comes down to debate of you know what do people want but at the same time keeping poker intact and what people love the game i mean whether i guess like let's say okay poker might not be ever as popular as some of these crack cocaine lottery games and it makes sense but at the same time i think as poker players out there like myself and other players we do have to advocate and say, all right, let's not completely change our game and drive all of our players that want to play traditional poker away to these other game formats. And, and yeah, sure, they might enjoy them. They might like them as well. But I mean, if that's the only goal and just if we want to create turn poker into crack cocaine lottery style poker, then all right. That's I mean, I, I'm sure more people might like that around the world. But at the same time, it's not poker to me. It's a it's a different game. It's not what I've come to learn as poker, come to love as poker and what yeah, people have been playing yeah. now for a number of years. Yeah, but like different people, you know, when you talk about driving people from one thing to another, you know, that's a bit of a bit of a misnomer. So for example, uh, when the right when Zoom poker or Rush poker first arose, you know, a whole bunch of people moved from playing traditional six max, nine max. In fact, actually why don't we go back to the very start? You know, when people play, you know, 15 years ago, people were playing limit poker and then no mm -hmm. limit hold'em came around. You know, people were not driven from limit to no limit. People chose because they said, oh, I want to play this game. This is better for me. And so now in, in recent years where you talk about, you know, people are not driven to play spins, but rather in a world where 50% of, 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 of online gambling is now done on your mobile phone, you know, of course people are going to want to play a format that makes sense in that in situation where you can play it in five minutes and, you know, without, you know, having to go to physio for playing, you know, an hour on end. And, and yeah. so... And so, yeah, so look, I, I think there's a, only a slight disagreement there between you and I, but what it is is that, you know, the players have moral agency. The players are human. You know, let them choose what they want to do. And, you know, I, I hope passionately that they choose slightly more traditional forms of poker, but, you know, if they want to flip a coin and, and you know, they can go all in every hand and there's, you know, some sort of flippament, then, you know, they can, they can do it, but it's not my game. Yeah, I'm not I'm not advocating anybody to do that. I guess what I when I say yeah. driven... More so, mean by the the type of marketing done, the type of content created about the game types, the way that the sites then can promote these different game types, the way that you know different content, I guess, is maybe shown on television. And I feel like you, as a as a site or you as an operator, you as as anything, you have. So if I want to, 
if I want to market my show as something where it's only these people are taking shots, talking shit at people, whatever, and I put content about that out there, well, then a large majority of people out there are going to think, okay, well, this is what my show is about. But if I decide to market a different way, then that's what people are going to are going to be driven to or going to kind of, that's what they're going to think my stuff is about. And then when you take a poker site and all right, if we decide what we're going to market here, if we're just going to put a lot of little pop-ups for spin and goes, when there's a big spin and go, we're going to have, Hey, you want to watch it? And we're going to send out emails. All our emails are focused on spin and goes. We're going to create advertisements. They're focused on spin and goes. Well, that's going to drive people to play spin and goes. If you keep seeing that, keep seeing that. Whereas if you decide I want to create content around cash games about PLO, if I want to put something into PLO or put something into Nolan and hold them, well, then there are going to be more people that go try these formats out because that's what they see. And that's what's that's what they're being driven towards. That's what they're being marketed towards. So I guess when I say driven from that format or from that standpoint, that's kind of what I'm referencing is that you you have the ability to sway people's opinions on what they should play and why they should play it. And if you tell them the spin and go is the most fun thing to play, well, then they're going to think that. If you tell some people that that cash games are the most fun thing to play or, or multi-table tournaments are the most fun thing to play, a lot of people, if they keep hearing it and keep hearing it and keep hearing it, well, they're probably going to believe that because they're going to play and most likely they're going to have a good time. No, like, so, but take, the, take the example of, of spinning goes like ex exactly the example of spinning goes is that, mm -hmm. you know, they were something was deployed in France on, on the site Winamax. Uh, and then it was very, very popular, got huge, huge uh, success within France. Uh, and then subsequently, you know, full tilt, uh, you know, issued a jackpot sit and goes. Uh, and right. it became, you know, simply because, you know, because customers wanted it, and you know, like you know, when you're when you're playing on this little device, you know, you don't want to sit there for hours on end. And so, you know, this this device is good for five minutes, but and so in that sense, you know, I I I I find it difficult to think of, you know, may, maybe there's perhaps a bit of exception around the the world of some content production, but like where you're providing an actual service, you know, it's difficult for me to find, think of a of a successful service that survives and grows purely on marketing. At the end of the other day, your marketing will get your customer in the first time. But for them to stick around and to, and to be there in the long term, you've got to have a good good product. You know, if you, you know, let's say you go to the supermarket and you say, oh, look, there's some wonderful advertising for milk and you buy the carton of milk. You go home and the milk tastes like shit. Well, you know, okay, you fooled me once. I, I ended up with a, with a carton of shitty milk. But go back, back the second time, I'm not going getting, to getting get fooled. And so, you know, I think that the same thing that applies with marketing and poker is that, okay, you can you can convince people to try playing sit and goes once or spin and goes or whatever it is, you, can, you know, whatever different new format, ridiculous format people come up with. But if it's going to survive and be meaningful, it's only because it's a fundamentally good product um, in the long run. And that's that's what exactly why spin and goes grew. Not because people were forced them, but because people tried them. Said, "Oh, look, this is better than old poker because I no longer have a have a sore neck after playing for an hour, um, and right. it fits in while I'm waiting for the bus or when I'm on the on the crapper and you know taking a dump. I can play it for five minutes and and I'm over and done with it. And so, yeah, you know, you know, so yeah, I don't know, like you know, I don't, like take for example, what is the what is perhaps the you know the the closest industry to to where it is all marketing driven is perhaps some sort of movie or, you know, where you go make what, you know, have a company set up to make one, com make one movie. And then, you know, people go make or purchase at one time. And, and that basically is the end of the interaction. So like if you go see Black Panther, you know, the vast majority of customers are only going to see either zero times or one. And so in that sense, you know, even something like that, you know, if you try making a, a great, movie with great marketing but shitty actual gr product you know i suspect mm -hmm. that'll that's not going to make you very much money because you know if it was people would do it <laughs> and then they'd smart it up pretty pretty quick smart you know? yeah i definitely i definitely understand where you're coming from with things too <laughs> i uh i mean just for my I'm very, you know, I, I i'm not coming from this uh, unbiased standpoint obviously i'm completely biased yeah. towards cash games it's something that that was such a, a, a inspiration for me coming up when i first started playing poker and just seeing a uh, the cash games, seeing those high stakes games, Good. getting the players to become personalities. Good. And I think, Good. you know, when, when you have, when poker is turned into, I, I guess, the other formats, you know, we're not really having that anymore. There are no best players in the world that come from online poker if online poker is not what it was. And then there's a comment in the chat that said, um, like they want to change what was immensely popular pre Black Friday. And I guess they, I don't think they want to change it, but they're just, yeah, you know, like, you uh, know, people they're, they're in 2018, Black Friday was. Like, oh, that was almost seven years ago. Like, 
<laughs> you know, like back in 2011, you know, people didn't have mobile devices in the same level of, of uh, saturation that they do today. And like, yeah, like if you want to, if you want to make a 2010 product and sell it in 2018, yeah, I'm sure go ahead and do it. But you know, for both of your customers, good luck to you because you know the world changes, and so you know the world is is different, and, and customers want different things. It's not you mm -hmm. can't you can't force people to play you know six max PLO. The only reason people will play six max PLO is if they they want to play six max PLO. You know? So in that sense, you know that's you got to find the right balance, and so hopefully. You know, there's an opportunity to create innovative, you know, games that are mind mind intensive and are, you know that are you know fun and competitive and so on. And you know, maybe run it once. You know, the Phil Galfon's uh, you know product might might well happen in maybe 2018. Who knows? And uh, and if it does, good luck to them. And you know, and then your customers will have a choice, and they can make every time they log into a poker client, they make a choice. You know, your they make a vote. Hey, do I want to play PLO? Do I want to play Nolan Holden? Do they want to play whatever it is? You know, every time they're voting and uh, with their money, and you know, I, I'm a very skeptical of what people say. I'm much more trusting of what people do. So, yeah, you definitely make some good points, though, and and kind of something to for me to think about more as well, too, and just kind of the idea of traditional or what people want to play mm -hmm. and that sort of thing, how it can merge together and how it can balance together. You mentioned run at once poker with Phil's site. We'll see. Phil obviously put out a, a great blog the other day speaking about Rake and kind of broke it down in a very, very well-spoken and well-put way. So I'm probably going to have Phil on. I'm going to try to get Phil on a podcast. We'll talk more about what he talked about and where the site might be at as well. Ball Balky has a good marketing potential campaign. Yes, it's good advertising. A quick game while taking a dump. Spinning goes is a game for you. Yeah, maybe we get Negrano on the toilet. <laughs> Uh, using the facilities, playing it. I love, man, I'm like, I want to, I want to play, I want to play. He and did he that. He did that yeah, you remember a few years ago he was streaming and went to the bathroom halfway through and, and uh, yeah, yeah, maybe it could be an actual commercial with the, with the camera. Maybe we get Usain Bolt involved or Kevin Hart. Kevin Hart walks in, Daniel, what are you doing? You're taking it, you go going, and then he's playing the spin and go, yeah, I don't, I mean, I don't, it could be an idea. Listen, yeah. marketing team, if you're out there, stars, feel free. To take that idea, I don't mind. You could just you don't have to credit me or credit Bob Balky or credit Michael for yeah. inspiring the idea. I think that'd make a great video and people when they're the back advertising on the back of toilet bar toilet doors and bars, that'd be great. You know, go all in. Yeah, I mean, why not? I don't know. So yeah. you uh, do you have to do you have say you have to go at a certain time or how much longer do you have? Yeah, I gotta go soonish, but yeah, yeah, actually. All right, guys, go. let's uh yeah. let's let's grab some let's grab some questions from uh from sure. the chat out here uh let's grab some questions from the chat commercials on the pop I'm serious it's a, it's a pretty good idea man i don't know uh i've merc says i've never met anyone who loves spin and goes or beat the clock i i, I don't think i have either to be honest with you uh well, yeah. Like, yeah but like like, like, like what well, you well, you, don't, you don't think there are people who are playing these things obviously there are people playing these things you but know, people like, love like, people, people like you sound, people, you sound like a guy like in the crush you know they, they're we're making them like these 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 like fucking Crack cocaine type of games, man. I don't know. I like people love Pat Lamanoma. Pat Lamanoma is the great game. <laughs> Anyone sitting there like I love amongst it. Joe Ingram's I friends? I'm sure. It is. I'm sure Joey Joey's mates love Pat Lamanoma. But you know, you know, you sound like some guy who lives in lives in New York. Says I've never met a Donald Trump voter. Like so, <laughs> like that's because you says it's about who you're hanging out with, not not about the popularity of the vote, of the popularity of the product. You know, if you if you. Listen, if you're watching this and you love Spin and Goes, I need you to send me a message or video telling me why you love Spin and Goes. The person who I believe loves Spin and Goes the most and can send me receipts that they've played a lot of Spin and Goes, I will give you a prize. I don't know what it'll I be. I love Spin and Goes. Don't listen to two, two middle-aged men chat here for an hour and a bit Are on you YouTube. Listen, with that beard, they're going to listen to you. I don't know what you're talking about. They, they see that beard. They want that beard, they got to watch. The beard, they got to watch with the... Uh, you know, I do. I do think I, I agree with you that I do have a face. It's much better made for listening than it is for, for watching. But what do you I don't know, kid. You look. You look good on the Al Jazeera. I don't. Look, I don't know how you're getting on Al Jazeera, <laughs> but you looked. You were looking pretty, pretty spiffy on that show, man. So it's, uh, it's Al Jazeera TV one day, um, and uh, Joe Ingram's uh, the next day. Very, mm. very strange. How, how, how did you get on? So, guys, there was a, a segment. I think it was like a week ago where Michael was on Al Jazeera TV. And I don't know exactly if this is a, I, I, I think of Al Jazeera, I think of like Afghanistan and the war back in 2001, two, three. How do you, what's the process like for getting on Al Jazeera? Do they call you? Do they, does, does it, does it Afghanistan man? Well, this is what I don't understand. How does that work? <laughs> okay. So hang on, just to be clear, Al Jazeera is an international TV network. 
uh, and they broadcast globally, like CNN does or BBC does or whatever. There are there are oh. normal TV network that you can get throughout oh. the world. Uh, oh. As it happens, their headquarters in Doha, uh, and so um, you know they had a had a segment talking about the the use of Usain Bolt in a uh, online uh, marketing campaign. Uh, and so me, as an expert on online marketing campaigns and branding and communications and so on, um, you know, ha we had a bit of a chat about some of the issues. Uh, involved in that so nothing at all to do with poker um much more about online marketing and branding and all that sort of business so so al jazeera is like cnn well, it's like an arabic version or a, a, an arab arab based competitor to cnn it's all in english it's like it's like you know it's on a, if you go to a, if you go to a hotel in london for example you can flick through you know french uh news you can deutsche Welle, Welle, the german news the bbc al jazeera russia today whatever yeah. like you know it's a just a just a news network so yeah so but i had an interview with them uh we speaking on their news about um about usain bolt uh, and some online marketing campaigns he'd been doing recently and what that means for his brand and so on shout out usain bolt i know usain bolt so after i poker stars he's been putting on so much volume on stars lately guys i've seen him at playing pop in omaha i've seen him playing two card pop in omaha i've seen him playing Five card pop in Omaha, and I've seen him playing multi table tournament pop in Omaha as well. So Usain Bolt's been battling. I think he's up uh, a good amount of money on Shark Scope right now. So I'm very excited to see how Usain Bolt's career does develop here. We have some questions. Let me go find this. This was the guy that busted the ultimate poker super user scam. Is that is that yeah, the one? Sure. Or yeah, yeah, yeah. absolute poker and ultimate bet. Although, like, just to be clear, like, it was a public thing, and I I contributed right. a little bit. To that. You know, the up until I got involved, the the site was saying, "Oh, it's just this guy getting really, really lucky," um, and so I made a graph that showed just how lucky you know the 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 cheater was 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 supposedly lucky, um, and so you know it's about fifteen standard deviations above the mean, which is about the same as winning a one in a million lottery on Monday night, Tuesday night, Wednesday night, Thursday night, Friday night, and Saturday night. And so if one person does that, then <laughs> they're the luckiest bastard in the world or something's a bit dodgy. So so basically what you're saying is you were one of the catalysts for bringing that to awareness because without you doing that, yeah. then who knows? They would have just been like, yeah, yeah, whatever, whatever, go away. Yeah, exactly, yeah. Yeah, it's exactly that. And so, you know, again, like what we were speaking about, you know, about half an hour ago, you know, I think it's right that, po that poker players and the customers and the public should be informed about the difference between the good poker sites and the shitty poker sites. And so, you know, that's why I'm beginning to work on this project that will hopefully do that in coming uh, weeks and months. Um, but also is why I got involved in that 10 years ago and, you know, why subsequently, you know, PokerStars contacted me and uh, started working for them. Uh, but, uh, yeah, yeah, so it was, a, you know, translating from the boring, complicated technical stuff into what normal people can understand, basically. Yeah. Let's see here. What do we got in this chat? Spinning goes just like my dump at the toilet. Okay. Um, uh, what's yeah, but like, you know, what, one of the things that I think is a, was a very healthy change for me was a couple of years ago, I went from realizing, hey, I don't like this. It's bad to, hey, I don't like this. It's not for me. Uh, and so when I made that mindset, I found my life a whole lot happier. You know, I like that. You know, I don't I like, like overcooked meat. You know, it doesn't mean it's bad. It just means that it's not for me. You better not ask yeah, the food snobs on Twitter. They're going to tell you. It's, <laughs> they're going to let you know it's bad, Michael. They're not. Oh no, they're... I am a food snob. I like. Don't get me wrong. I, you know, I'm. I'm a. I do all the sous vide. I love a good, uh, good juicy burger. And you know, I agree. You know, I, I feel pity for people who like their meat overcooked. But you know, you've now got. To, can, you know, can you tell the business. difference between if I if I showed you 20 posts from people on, on Instagram of their food of sushi, can you tell me the difference between the sushi? Can you tell me what's good sushi or bad sushi? Because these people, these food experts, they post this. Oh, I feel no. like I'm looking at the same sushi over and over again for the last seven years. So can you tell I, the different, could, difference? No, but I could do it for pizza. Well, pizza, yeah. Like, pizza, I think that's like a... You could, but, so wait, you think you could tell what's good pizza from just a photo? Oh, yeah, absolutely. Without, without oh, a doubt. God, I wish I actually had some photos of pizza right now as a pizza yeah. expert myself. <laughs> I gotta like actually write this down. I actually sort of write it. All right, I gotta put that down there. I'm gonna remember that. Uh, European, what? He says, why should people play at coin poker? Hmm. Sure, so I, th I think that people should play at coin poker because they enjoy the game in that they, you know, it should be, 
about having fun. It should be, you know, because they find that coin poker is fun, it's safe and competitive. And, uh, and you know, that, that's what coin poker stands for. Uh, and so, you know, coin poker currently does not offer spin and goes. Um, you know, maybe it will in the future, but at the moment it doesn't. And so, you know, in the, you know, if you want to play, you know, a fun, safe and competitive game, go play coin poker. All right. We got to add some more. We're going to add more energy to that pitch, guys. And we're going to try that one more time. Michael, why should they play a coin poker, man? Why are they going to choose coin? Listen, I'm sitting on the internet. I got options. I'm on the toilet. I don't know what I'm doing. I, I get off the toilet. The phone's done. The spinning goes down. Whatever. I'm going there. I want to play. I got options, right? You got you got party poker. Oh, Fedor Holes. Oh, the young prince who's looking looking all good on the thing. On 888 poker, I'm looking at Vivian Saliba and the other females of the team. Stars. I got Daniel Negreanu and Usain Bolt running a race in the African jungle. Why am I going to choose coin poker? I'm going to load up. I'm going to get the I'm going to get the coin. Why am I why am I choosing coin poker? What 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 what, what am I getting, Michael? What am I getting? Yeah, what I'm getting ready at coin right poker? now. I'm ready right now. Sure, what you're getting at coin poker is fun, safe and competitive game that you can trust. Yes. You know the money's there, you know it's secure because it's all on the Bitcoin and using some not on the Bitcoin, on the blockchain um, and using some uh, you know, interesting new technologies to offer a game that is fun, safe and competitive. Yes. I'm in for that. You're supporting the potential evolution of online poker. Hopefully secure, as they said. I don't know. You know, I can't say anything 100% secure out there these days. I feel like the most secure place is probably poker stars for your money. Let's be honest with you. But definitely support a new project. Also, guys, a bonus is that you potentially get money in crypto in the cryptocurrency space too. So I don't know exactly what the process is like right now for acquiring the chips needed to play on the site and how that transition works. I'm sure that they have something on their site that'll show you how exactly to acquire those chips. But that also is kind of something cool. It kind of gets you more familiar with the cryptocurrency space in a very small way. And I feel like cryptocurrency has the potential to be one of the biggest things in the entire world and how worldwide money does work in the future. So any way you can kind of get your foot in the door, I think this is a, a pretty good way to get your foot in the door and at least start researching exactly what cryptocurrency is and what Bitcoin is, what Ethereum is. And and yeah, I mean, that I think that's a pretty big uh, sell, selling point right there for cryptocurrency sites as well. It's just it gets you, gets you more involved in, in that space and in that world and at least paying more attention to it when otherwise you might not be bothered to pay attention to it. Yeah, I guess so. Look, I, I don't, you know, I, I think you should be playing at coin poker because of because of the actual game of poker. Um, you know, if you want to speculate, go do that somewhere else. But like, you know, coin poker should be about poker, and that all, you know, that's that's what it stands for. And you know, one of the things you said in there, you about whether or not you trust or you don't trust the site. I think that's the whole problem with the old legacy online poker sites. You've got to trust Party Poker or Poker Stars or Eight 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 Poker's word that their money's in the bank account. Whereas with CoinBoat, you don't need to trust it because it's all there on the publicly verifiable blockchain. Uh, and so that's what I think is the key difference in that, yeah, you know, who the, who the, who the fuck is Michael Josem or, or you know, Tony G or Usain Bolt or, or you know, Vanessa Selbst or, or, you know, Barry Carter to, you know, endorse, you know, different sites. You don't need, you don't need to trust them. How did you just you know, come up with those names? <laughs> That's the name. Okay. No, like, the, like, the point is, is that is that you don't need to trust an individual with by using the blockchain technology. It's there. It's verifiable. And you know, if you if you don't trust Michael Joseph and you don't like beards, then it doesn't doesn't matter because that's still on the on the blockchain, which is you know a public you know disclosure. You know, don't take my word for it. You know? The five don't, names don't. He, cho he chooses are are yeah. those five names that makes complete Vanessa Selms, Barry Carter, Usain Bolt. That makes sense. Okay, it's uh, <laughs> that makes sense, guys. And guys, if you do want to sign up, by the if you do want to sign up, by the way, use the promo code Gummy Worms on Coin Poker. You say that the podcast sent you. They're going to give you uh, one million dollars in free free Coin Poker chips as well, too. So yeah, you just use that promo code in there. And um and yeah, I'm actually not. I'm kidding. That's actually not true. They are not giving away that promotion in case you guys believe me that that was serious there. there. That was actually not a joke. So that's true. We have a lot of, we had a lot. Can you got any shout outs you want to give Mike? Any people listening out there you may want to give a shout out to somebody? Yeah. There's one person in particular, a great guy by the name of Karen, Callum Morrissey. Uh, oh. And that he lives here on the Isle of Man. I'm here on the Isle of Man, by the way, a uh, little Island in the, in the, in the, in the Irish sea. Uh, and so when you, when you tweeted uh, uh, about the other day that I was going to be here with you, he was uh, so excited that two of his favorite men in the whole wide world, Joey Ingram and Michael Joseph, were both going to be on the podcast together. And so he is, you know, perhaps potentially, I've heard it said that he is one of the Isle of Man's finest footballers to never have played professionally. 
uh, and uh, and and he is a uh, you know an elite elite machine, an athletic uh, uh, superhero um, to a lot of people. And uh, yeah, so hi to Callum. Hope you're still watching, and you know, I, um, I hope you could have endured the last eighty minutes of uh, of uh, me and Joey with our man love wow. for each other. Yeah. Wow. That's how you give a shout out to someone right there. Pete, take notes, anyone that comes in the future. That's how you shout out a friend right there, man. Allegedly, yeah, one of the best friend. football We're players. To... I like that. Alleged... Yeah. Hmm. Well, I'm going to give some yeah. shouts here. Let me see what we got in the chat. We got, look, don't touch. What's up, Poppy? What's happening? John Remy asking a bunch of weird fucking questions today. But I got love for you, John. Much love. You asked me, can I twerk earlier? First of all, that's really weird. Why would you ask me that? Second of all, of course I can. And by, of course I can, I mean, I have no idea how to do that. We got my boy Harbs out there in the chat. What's up, Harbs? What's happening, Big Poppy? What's going on? Martin Van Der Erst, Poppy. What's happening, brother? First step forward. What's up? Using my last name, Ingram. Uh, that's okay. Not many people use my last name, Ingram, but that's cool. Ian Griffin, my guy out there. What's up, Ian? He said, check my Instagram message. I will. I'll see what you said. Connie Dobbs, there's no way you're actually a woman. Steven S out there. What's up, Steven? Noob Neil in the chat. Joey used your promo code for Poker Go. Subscribed a few days back. Thank you, Noob Neil, for the contribution to the fund. Dirk Van Geck. I've never seen your name, but what's up, Poppy? What's happening, brother? Zachary Weatherford. John New. I'm in Boston, and you're my favorite, Poppy. Thank you, Zachary. Much love. Shout out to Boston. Shout out to the wind. Shout out to my boy, Steve McLaughlin. Just moved out there. And uh, and yeah, man, I'm excited to be back on the podcast, guys. We're going to be back tomorrow with, my, with Donnie Peters. David, I don't want to keep calling him Donnie. It's David Peters. I, I feel like I have Donnie Peters and David Peters. I've said this wrong to myself like 55 times. Do you know Donnie Peters? For He works for, uh, I think, World Poker Tour right now. He's worked Poker News, Michael. Yeah, yeah. Good guy. Yeah, I, I, I keep confusing the names Donnie Peters and David Peters. David Peters, one of the best tournament players in the world. Donnie Peters works for WPT, former for Poker News as well. I got to have those in my mind. But that's tomorrow night, guys. A little Saturday. Grab your wine. Grab your girl. Grab your husband, grab your boyfriend, grab whoever you want to grab and join us tomorrow night, 6 p.m. Uh, Eastern time. So, Michael, what can we expect from you kind of coming up here in the future with uh, with the coin poker and which is what you're doing in general? Yeah, well, first of all, I've got some exciting news for you, Joey. Um, I'm uh, I'm no longer in a hurry to leave tonight. So we can uh, we can uh, go as long or as short as you like um, before you get bored of me. Um, so I love what hanging happened? out with you so much. Yeah, uh, no, change of plans. Don't worry. Um, so, uh, what's the future hold? Um, good question. So, I'm doing a bit of uh, freelance work for a whole bunch of different uh, businesses, uh, doing some other stuff in the cryptocurrency space with some other other brands, some other companies, um, and uh, you know, basically just staying out of trouble mostly. So, as as de so. as descriptive as that was, I'm going to ask a follow up. What kind of stuff you working on, kid? What are you What are you doing? Uh, yeah, just, uh, you know, like obviously I was the head of public relations at PokerStars for four or five years or something, four, four, four and a bit years. Uh, and uh, and uh, and so, yeah, so just doing some work for some different businesses there, um, some that, uh, that are keeping me entertained and keeping me uh, in heating and electricity and uh, allow me to not be homeless, which is a, a nice combination. Thank God. Yeah. What about you? What is the future? You don't, you don't answer many questions on this uh, podcast, I see. What's your uh, what? What does the future hold for for Joey Young? Man, I don't, I don't know. Hey, if somebody can answer this question for me, I'm gonna pay him a lot of money because I don't. I, I'm I'm like I'm taking it day by day. And I'm I'm trying to figure out what I want to spend my time doing. I'm really enjoying doing the investigation stuff right now. Just kind of looking more into into different companies and seeing how they operate, seeing how business works, and and sort of seeing those kind of things. So, I've been kind of doing that. There's not really much great places for me to play online in Poplin, Omaha right now. So, and I, I've kind of, I don't know, I'm just kind of going back and forth on what exactly I want to do in terms of playing poker. And yeah, I, mean, I don't know, trying to figure out my life, trying to take it step by step, trying to get better at organization and planning and uh, those little small things that kind of build a bigger foundation of who you are as a person. And I've, I've never been planned, a big planner, never been a big organizer. I've and and I've sort of I'm trying to expand my operation and just what I'm working out of life and I'm realizing that I'm having these breakdowns and trying to do these things because I never really learned how to do these things on a small level. So when I try to do new things, I just struggle with it. I can't execute. I'm not being disciplined and being consistent with doing it. So I'm trying to just re rebuild a lot of those things in my life and um and yeah, put out we're going to be doing two podcasts a week here coming up for the foreseeable future otherwise I lose $5,000 and have to play 10 World Series of Poker events this summer, which I'm definitely not going to do. So there's no way. Yeah. 
So yeah. I don't know. I'm just trying to figure out what exactly I want to spend my time doing. Pretty much where I'm it at sounds, right now. Sounds to me, forgive me, this might be a bit too confronting and personal, but you spoke there all about uh, vocational employment orientated stuff. What about family? Does uh, does Joey have plans to have a family? Like uh, your community? Do you have like, uh, you know, outside of the broadcasting booth? Do you, you know, yeah, do, do you know. have any I mean, plans there? That sounds like my mother. My mom asked me this question all the time. Poppy, when are you going to get, get, well, she doesn't say me Poppy, let's be honest, but when are you going to have kids? When are you going to get married? I, I don't know, man. I'm, I mean, I'm not really in a big rush to to do that. Yeah, I'm, not, I'm not asking when. I'm like, is that something of interest to you? Or I don't know. Definitely. Yeah, yeah. I think I'm open to it. I'm not like totally super like closed off where I never want to do something like that. And I'm definitely open to it. I don't know when it might happen. It might happen next week. It might happen in a two years from now. It might I mean literally it might happen next week. You never know with me. So yeah, I don't know. I'm definitely open to it, but not necessarily. Look, look out, ladies, if you hang out with uh, Joey next week, uh, that could be a bit dangerous. Oh. But uh, they couldn't. Some people they want to. They want. I mean, I'm very happy. My audience is all men, Michael. I'm going to be honest with you because if it was women. <laughs> I don't know what I, I don't know what I it, it, I mean the guys are crazy enough I can't imagine if these were then women and they were trying to they were trying to to you know get me out of line with them so I don't know it'd be it'd be a little bit yeah yeah you're a, you're a victim. yeah I was I was listening to a, a a really interesting podcast the other day and talking about what makes people happy in life and talking about those four things a vocation of work of of their community uh, of uh, family but also some degree of faith or you know bigger commitment to you know, life, something bigger than just uh, life. So. so some type of like, 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 like church religion or is it, it just, it could be church, you know, it could be, you know, it could be some sort of, a, you know, environmentalism or something is the modern day religion, right? Um, you know, there's so, something like that, but uh, yeah. I don't know. Maybe it's just your crusade against uh, um, bots and, and so on. So uh, yeah, I think it, I think it could be. I mean, I've been watching uh, about Charles Manson. I'm not going to shout out Charles Manson. The guy's a psychopath. Charles Manson was a cult leader back in the 60s or 70s, I believe. And there's been a bunch of good shows lately that I've been watching about him and uh, 60s, 60s. So, and he basically they he was the higher purpose. He was the god to people. So I've been thinking about starting a cult potentially. I don't know what kind of cult it would be. Maybe it'd be the cult of the Great Game of Pop in Omaha. It might be the cult of a poker. It might be the cult of of getting better at life. I don't, I don't really know. I'm, I'm not sure exactly what it could be. I am in talks with a, a, a very large company right now about doing a podcast for them. It's a mainstream men's lifestyle company that is one of the most popular at what they do right now on the internet. So I might be doing something with them on a, on a regular basis as well. And I don't know, I've been really thinking about maybe pursuing a more mainstream podcast too and having more mainstream guests on and seeing what I could do. I've always kind of wanted to do a mainstream podcast. That was my five to 10 year goal when I first started was create the best podcast in poker and then take that on a bigger level and just have on people from all over the world on. So I'm considering doing that more. I know that would sacrifice the time I put into poker, the time I put into poker content and just thinking about poker. So I'm hesitant to want to do that, but it's been on my mind as something I, I'm thinking about doing. I can imagine, you know, like on the Hendon mob, as you get a cash in each new country, you get a little flag. You can uh, get one of those for each new guest that you get from all over the world. Yeah, I, I, I'd be curious to see if I, how many people, because I can, you can see who watches this show, and there's, I think almost every country has been on there at some point in time. But I know I haven't had a guest from every part of the world, and that actually be pretty cool to do is do some sort of challenge in one year or two years where you, ID, you want to get a guest. That's actually, I gotta write that down. It's a pretty cool challenge. Yeah. I, I, I wonder what countries would be the hardest. Well, normally for normal people, the Isle of Man would be hard, super hard, like some some little countries and so on. But uh, um, you could get somewhere into like Africa, sub-Saharan Africa. That'd be awful. Um, yeah, North would Korea be, would obviously be the nut hardest. That would actually be really hard. I don't know if I could find like a native Nigerian to, uh, that lives in Nigeria to come on the podcast. It might. Have, I, I don't think I'd want to do someone who is an expat. I guess maybe expat I could do or someone... I don't want to do someone who's traveling, but I'm actually going to look more into this. North Korea, you're right. We probably cannot get North Korea. That's true. But it would be a test yeah. to see if we could get North Korea. Can you imagine if yeah. we got North Korea, guys? Yeah, you, could, be... you could be the new Dennis Rodman. I don't know if I'm going to... Man, it's actually... I don't, yeah, I'm going to look into this more. This could be a potential no, I mean, challenge. Like you would be the next Dennis Rodman if you can get into North Korea like he did. Um, you know, you could be the great... 
Well, yeah, you're you're big into you're big in the political stuff, right? You mentioned before you were working for uh, someone in Parliament in Australia before you got into online poker, right? Yeah, yeah. Once upon a time, when I was young and innocent. Are you still very much involved in politics? Do you keep up with the politics of the world, or just over in yeah. maybe in, in Australia or in the yeah. England? A, a little bit over over you know over here, you know. But uh, um, that's mostly just uh, I enjoy arguing with people on the Twitter. I have no professional involvement some uh, actually some uh, just the other week um the isle of man is uh, currently going through their um process for appointing um their equivalent of the u.s senate uh, and instead of it being publicly elected it's it's elected by essentially the equivalent of the house of representatives and uh, and so some people had spoken to me about standing but it's not for me just yet so we'll see wait they've spoken to you about applying for the equivalent of the u.s senate in isle of man yeah yeah, why? <laughs> That's awesome. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Look, it's uh, look, it's it could be a bit of fun, but uh, you know, I uh, I think that you know the idea, firstly, that you have the House of Representatives appointing a Senate is just such a like it's something from the nineteenth century. Um, but uh, and so you know, it's uh, you know, I have some ideas of, of things that could make the world a better place, but but uh, you know, it's uh, it's not for me just yet. So. Some House of Cards type of stuff. How so? How realistic? I've been watching House of Cards. You guys know House of Cards, the show on Netflix. It it paints the 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 entire political process in government as the most out of line thing I've ever seen in my life. How accurate do you think that that show is to what actually is real? Hundred percent. Okay. The bit that is deeply unreal about it is this idea that people have plans, uh, and uh, and from my experience of uh, of. Uh, of uh, politics back in Australia, what I see in the Isle of Man, and my um, I have a lot of friends who are involved in UK, and you know, you know, I, I monitor American politics a little bit. The idea that there's someone who has some you know great conniving plan is absolute rubbish. It is just a whole bunch of clowns. You know, they launch these things, say these things, whoops, and uh, it all just falls in a heap. There's no script. Uh, because it's all a giant mess. There's no one in control. There's no one who has a plan. It is just carnage. So, yeah, Alexander says, LOL, I live in Brazil. 99%, 99.9% are criminals and many are going to jail. Yeah. yeah. I mean, it seems like from if you look more into Panama Papers, which is kind of somewhere that took me when I was going down the Amaya rabbit hole, and you just see how, I mean, corrupt a lot of these 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 governments or these charities or these foundations or these these senators in different countries and different continents all over the world are, you're sort of like, man, it's not like this is just specific to gambling or whatever. This is in every part of the world. The government's not excluded. These are leaders of countries. These are not excluded from these, these, these sorts of activities. Yeah. It's just kind of wild to see. Yeah. Um, you know, it's, you know, what that was really revealing a whole bunch of you know, dirty secrets, and the and the and subsequently the the next set of uh, papers were called the Paradise Papers, which featured a whole lot of the Isle of Man. Uh, got a oh. got some pretty uh, significant coverage there, and related, you know that's that's why um, you know Poker News Poker News's ownership of uh, being owned by Poker Stars became public is because you know coincided with the release of those those Paradise Papers, and uh, and so in that sense the. Um, you know what those papers shows there's a whole bunch of people doing a whole bunch of different stuff but the idea that there's some master plan like house of cards shows is 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 rubbish like like brazil is the is a great example of that where you have you know the there's I, I i don't even know which ones are in power these days they all get replaced and like it's all they've all been impeached and it's just it is carnage um, and that you know I, I sort of like the idea you know, in the you know in the Western democratic world, that it is kind that there is no plan because the alternative is you have you know the Chinese president appointing himself president for life, or Vladimir Putin you know abolishing all the term limits and having you know essentially serving as a dictator. You know that's you know I like that there's carnage and I like that there's no one in control because you know it reduces you know the risk that someone actually evil will do stuff because that's what happens when you when you do that. Yeah, I don't know too much about the uh, what what things are like in China or what things are like in North Korea or Russia with Putin, but uh, yeah, that does sound pretty wild. If you can just say ah, I'm president forever, there's nothing a goddamn thing you can do about it. If you got an issue, <laughs> we're gonna kill you or put you in jail. I mean, like Ukraine's kind of doing that with some of the I've seen that. If you speak out against the government, they're gonna might arrest you and put you in jail. It's just it, it could it seems like it could be a lot crazier than it is here in America and um, yeah. and yeah, even in a bunch of countries around the world. 
Yeah. Oh, exactly. You know, like in, in the in the UK, especially where you have all those checks and balances or the US, um, you know, it's a bit messy and, you know, no one could ever accuse <laughs> Donald Trump of having some master plan with, you know, whatever carnage it comes, you know, like that's a great example of it, right? You know, this ongoing carnage is just, uh, it just, you know, just never ceases to disappoint you. But uh, what are you going to do? Yeah, it's it's definitely pretty wild to see. I mean, I, I guess I, I used to be very, uh, you know, politics was never a conversation topic on here. But since I've been doing more research uh, on this kind of stuff over the past month, I'm not, I wouldn't say I'm, I wouldn't say I'm more interested in it. I, I don't think I'd ever want to be involved in it. But it is kind of fascinating just to see exactly how it's run, how it operates, what the parallels are to potentially companies in poker, what the parallels are potentially in companies in in sports, because those are things I'm very interested in. So it's been eye-opening from that. I'm trying not to get too invested in it because I feel like it's a lot of energy you devote to it and a lot of conspiracy theories and a lot of crazy things you start thinking about. And you might drive yourself a little bit crazy. So trying not to trying not to get too involved with um with diving down that rabbit hole of that. Yeah. I think it's probably safest for everyone. That's true. I don't, want to be putting, I don't want to be putting on a video about the Brazilian government. <laughs> Brazilian government exposed. You know, I don't know, man. I guess I, I don't want to be the one. That, I don't, I don't know. Oh no, you don't need to because they're all exposing each other. So it's like uh it's like every every card is revealed and so no other new guy getting impeached or whatever. It's just so, yeah. Shout out to Brazil, man. Let me take a couple more questions from the chat, guys. We're probably we're gonna wrap things up here. I'm gonna get some. Uh, I don't know what I'm gonna do. I've never. I haven't been awake this um this early. So I don't really know what I'm. What I'm, like what I'm doing. Adult human almost. What do you say? You're almost like an adult human. You know, getting up in the morning and. I don't. And I don't like this narrative that to be an adult you need to wake up at an early time. I don't like this narrative. I sure. think an adult should wake up anytime he wants to wake up. Sure. That 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 that's true. But. <laughs> Yeah, I agree. I think there is a degree of there is a degree of adultness in in taking on board the difficult challenges of life and the routine and you know getting up and and doing those tough things in the morning. That is that is definitely a great point. I do feel like there are things that that there are benefits to waking up at a at a structured time that can benefit to other structures in your life. And if you do have a completely out of line structure in terms of your sleep that that has to, I'm, I'm, I'm sure it has to for myself, it has to carry yeah. over into other things. So if you can't structure your sleep, which is one of the things you do every day, how are you going to structure these more complicated yeah. tasks and things? And, and yeah, I definitely think that's a really good point though. And a big reason for me to kind of stay on this and stay motivated with it is because it, it starts with structure here. And then if you can structure that, you structure your, your morning, kind of what you do as in terms of to get your day going, whether it's breakfast, water, take a shower, brush your teeth or whatever and then you can sort of build a foundation on that on top of other things and then it carries over into potentially creating content and the way that you deal with friendships the way that you deal with your relationships and um and yeah that might have been uh, I, I really like that outlook on it and kind of change the way that you frame the idea uh, of waking up at a certain time yeah well but like waking up like it's gonna be the easiest thing in the world and you know like the, then you get onto the harder stuff but uh um, there's a great book by um, by Ben Sass, who is he is a politician, so forgive me for that. But Ben Sass, he writes he wrote this great book called um, "The Vanishing American Adult," um, oh. talking about a whole bunch of these ideas that you know it was in the context. So the book is not nothing at all about politics. So the book is about him as a um, as a human, as a father. It's in the context of him, the lessons that he's learned from being a father and the, and the values that he wants to instill in his children. Uh, but for me, you, you know, I do not have any children that I, that I know about at least. Um, I took it in a slightly different context, which is about life advice. And I find it quite, find it quite um, uh, inspiring and powerful message, this idea of getting up and doing work because it's productive and because it's good, because it's, you know, it's not just you know, about doing the things that are easy, but doing the things that are hard, um, which are much more satisfying and much more, you know, soul um, and personality and character for me. Um, and, you know, and, you know, you know some, some, some people are very fortunate that, uh, you know, they have different lifestyles, but, you know, I've got to get up each morning and they'll go to work because otherwise I don't get paid by the, by the boss and, you know, there's value in that. And so, you know, we can't all be 30-something-year-old uh, adolescents. Yeah. Yeah, I'm con I'm more convinced now than ever. I'm gonna check out this book. Actually, it sounds like something I can, I can very much benefit to uh, from reading. So, but yeah, that's my next step. That's what I'm working on right now, Michael. I'm working at kind of getting these things in order. Good. 
getting getting this more of the structure on instead of having zero percent structure. And I'm trying to have 100 percent structure, but I do want to find a nice happy medium in there yeah. to uh to do things. Yeah, so. to find out what's right for you because there's there's no way to live life. You got to you know lead you know a life that's good for you. Yeah. So guys, uh, no tank t- tank tops for my mainstream podcast. I'm bringing tank tops back. Listen, guys, I've been hitting the gym pretty hard again. I'm getting back in the gym. I got some gains to show off with the biceps and with the shoulders and with the chesticles. So I'm coming back with tank tops for now on with my podcast. I don't know if that's true. I do like wearing hoodies. It just it take it's less distracting for all the women out there that watch the show. If I'm just in a hoodie, I don't want you guys staring at my sexy my sexy muscles. Joseph obviously took the same route. He didn't want you st- staring at his. No, I did think about hoodie. wearing the. Uh... I did think about wearing the the tank top, but uh, um, instead I'm wearing a, a shirt and a cardigan. So the the ladies would have been happy to see you, your muscles and see your 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 hairy chest, my friend. They would have gone well with the beard. They would have been hit you up nonstop. I, I thank you for not not doing that because you would have taken I away my ladies. The content of my character. Yeah, they they, they certainly might have thought they might have not listened to you when you talked about security. They might have thought <laughs> only been thinking about your hairy chest and your tank top you had on. So. I uh, I very much appreciate that. Rayon says, am I wearing pants? I am actually wearing pants today. Michael, are you wearing pants today? <laughs> yes. I don't know. There's like a there's a, 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 a small chance you're just not wearing pants. I don't know. So who knows, man? I am wearing pants, though. Thank you for that question, Rayon. I do appreciate your questions, as always. So but yeah, Michael, where can people find you? If they want to come find you, you're on Twitter, right? Where do you want to where do you want to send the people out there? Yeah, look, I'm on the Twitter at, uh, at, at Michael Joseph, but... Uh... Um, you can also, hey, actually what I'm uh, are now doing, if you actually want to come and find me, my house is now available for rent on Airbnb. So if you do okay. want to come stay at the Joseph Castle of Freedom, you look it up, Airbnb. It's a spacious central Douglas apartment. Beautiful views. Um, not not in this room particularly, but, you know, broadly. Uh, the, uh, the uh, yeah, yeah. Joseph Castle of Freedom. Um, but, yeah, you can follow me on the Twitter or at Michael Joseph. Or, so yeah. if we're in Isle of Man, we want to stay at your house. We go. Do we put in Airbnb Joseph Castle of Freedom? Is that what we search? What are we uh, searching it, here? Yeah. What do you? We, I'll, I'll have to put it up on my website or, or something. But no, if yeah. you just a, a spacious Douglas apartment, so it's just down okay. by the sea. It's a, be- a beautiful seaside apartment. I need you to go back and watch what you just said about your house, and then I need you to go back and watch what you said about coin poker. You got to keep that same energy up when you're speaking about <laughs> coin poker. You spoke about your house, man. I want to stay in your house right now. You sold me on staying in the house. You spoke about cone poker. I didn't feel that. I didn't feel that same energy, man. So you need to go back, check the tapes, get in the lab, see how you brought that energy, and then bring that energy for coin poker, man. Yeah, well, like you know, coin poker is it's, it's you know it's serious business. It's about changing the face of poker. It's about you know being a trustworthy, um, and you know, blockchain is not not nearly as sexy as uh, spending a night at my place, right? So. Damn! Whoa! What do we? Uh, wait! What yeah. bonus value prop? Are we sharing a room? Is it? Do you have a separate room? Like, what? What exactly are you offering on this Airbnb service? Look, we we can negotiate that exactly. Um, but uh, yeah, man. No. whoa! Yeah. Wow. Okay, I see what you have in here. You know, I've thought about this strat, Michael, as well. Maybe rent. Maybe I'll rent out my second room for guests that want to come stay here, and then yeah. you can see the guests who apply, and you only approve a certain GTO guest. That's actually not a bad idea. Huh. Um, I don't know exactly exactly what you had in mind there. However, I did have a one of my very best friends. Um, her name was Ali, um, and she was uh, renting out her place on Airbnb, um, and had a, had a lovely gentleman come and stay in um, in in the US. And uh, they got they you know one thing led to another, and they hung out, and uh, and one thing led to another. They got married, and they had their ch- first child last year. Yeah, Airbnb marriage, Airbnb babies. That's. Uh, that's not, by the way, just, just to be clear, Joey, you and I are not having babies if you stay in my place in the Airbnb. But um, yeah, that's the thing. I'm going to get you pregnant. What are you, t- I, I'm st- I'm getting you pregnant. That's my goal when I come there. You're I, I already, I already have goal. the gut to show you. Get you pregnant yeah. is my goal. What are you talking about, man? I don't know how, by any means necessary, I'm going to try. I don't know if it's possible yet, quite yet, for men to get pregnant, but I'm gonna, we'll adopt a kid. We can adopt a little Nigerian baby. We'll call, like him, you- we'll call him, we'll call him, Limit Omaha. First name Pop, middle name Limit, last name Omaha, and uh, I don't know. That sounds like good. It'll be like an episode of Twins. You can you can be Danny DeVito. I'll be Arnie. That's, That's fine. Perfect. You gotta talk like him though. That's completely fine. You you gotta be him. <laughs> That's crazy. She yeah. she she got married to the guy that. That's crazy. That's wild right there. Yeah, like it took, obviously it took uh, you know a couple of years in between, uh, but yeah. This is yeah. some GTO I never thought of, guys. Renting out your second room on Airbnb. <laughs> 
I mean, I actually, I, I'm going to be honest. I've heard of people doing this before. I never put much thought into it. It uh-huh. seems pretty GTO if you live in a big city. I don't know. I'm I, now my like. I, I, my, I, I think if you if you're doing it with as a way to to meet romantic partners, that's creepy as hell. Don't do that. That's that's terrible. But you know, some some things lead one things lead to another, and uh, and it can you know you can find beautiful relationships in the most weirdest of places. But uh, but uh, yeah, don't don't do it because you want to. You know, pick up a girl to it because you know, you know we'll have a spare spare room and you want to do something with it. I, I'm I'm seeing your mouth move. I'm just not hearing what you're saying when you when you say that. So I I don't I totally I didn't hear what you just said. I I don't I don't yeah I don't I don't know I didn't hear that. But so if you guys if you guys want, let me know if you want to rent out my room in Las Vegas, the Poppy's Palace, aka Poppy's Kingdom, aka Spare Bedroom City, aka Looking for Love. And uh, if you're an Isle man, of course, check out Michael's room. If you're interested, hit him up on Twitter at Michael. I think Joseph you put it back there. Puppy's Palace. Puppy's yeah, Palace. Puppy's, Puppy's, Puppy's Palace. Palace. Yeah. That's yeah. That's it. It's beautiful. This is my palace, baby. You can be on a podcast. You want to be on a podcast? You want to be sitting on this bed during a podcast? This year shot. That's uh, such a compelling offer. You're invited, but don't get me pregnant, okay? You're invited, but you can't get me pregnant, please. I'd, I'd appreciate that. Yeah. Well, I'll, Thank you. Tr- I'll try not to. That's a- Thank you. Guys in the chat. Whoa, whoa. Guys in the chat are getting excited. Calm down, guys. Calm down. Calm down. You so can come stay here time. if you want. Please. Submit your resumes. Please. Calm down. All right. What's the rate on that room? That's a great question, Clint. I'm <laughs> glad he asked. What's the rate on your room? What's the, what's, the, uh, what's the going price going? Well, there's actually... <laughs> no, there's a great rewards program. It just got slashed by... No, there's a... <laughs> there's a <laughs> There's a uh, there's actually a fifteen percent offer off in uh, in the month of May, uh, and so uh, yeah. So, <laughs> so Michael, I actually I I, I you know I've, I've known about Michael's room that he rented for a while because I had a friend go to Isle of Man, but she ended up staying in a hotel. And yeah. previous back like six months uh, on the, on the offerings, he was offering free breakfast. He was going to cook the breakfast. He had a voucher potentially for a, for a, a dinner or a meal or something like that, like a lunch meal, like an added value bonus. I think he put like three to- towels in the bathroom. He had a, a, a big, a big like 60 inch TV in the room if you wanted to check out the room. And then she went back like uh, five months later and looked at what's offering. And the TV was like a uh, like 20, I don't know, they got a tube TV in there. The free breakfast, the free dinner is gone. And all the other value options were basically taken off. You had to pay for internet. I never even heard that in Airbnb. And I don't know if well, Michael was inspired there's one, by there's one exception. That is, you do get free broadcasts of every one of uh, of Chicago Joey's podcasts. They God come, damn, by, they get man. piped, they get piped right throughout the house. There's speakers in every room where you can enjoy listening to every moment of the dulcet tones of Joey Ingram. Yeah. That's crazy. That's that's a cool value right there. That's great for me. Yeah, look, it's you know some people would pay you for that. I mean, some people are. They, they definitely would. I mean, I think it's cool that you decided it to be inspired by the current changes by Amaya. Obviously, your former employer, Poker Stars, you decided to cut the value rewards for your regular clients. And uh, whatever it is, what it is. <laughs> no, my, it is. My, Other... first customer, my first visitor is staying tomorrow night. So, uh, yeah. Is this really happening? Yeah, yeah it's really happening at the... At the Joseph Castle Freedom. It's, uh, it's so a... you get to choose who stays in your room, right? You can pick who stays there. Yeah, it's like, yeah, yeah. That's how Airbnb works, right? I'm not, just to be clear, I'm not going to be here at the same time. I'm, I'll be, I'll be out, but, you know. Oh, I think I'll be down in London. Yeah. Where are you going? What, what, what are you, where are you going? What are you doing? I'm going, I'm, I'm going to London on uh, tomorrow and then, uh, uh, on uh, Monday, going to Munich for three days, and then uh, going across to Switzerland and France for skiing, uh, Geneva and Chamonix. So uh, it should be a bit of fun. Yeah. My God, how much money are they paying you, Joe? Give me a fucking job where you're at. How much are they paying you, kid? You're, you must be making the money over there, taking just taking a little vacay, huh? Well, the joy of freelancing is uh, you can do it from anywhere, and uh, sure. um, you know, yeah. And so, like, I'm doing it. You know, I'll be working most of those days, but like in Munich, and so. Nothing better than a good schnitzel in Munich. And uh, yeah, when is what? I, in fact, maybe there's an idea for you. You could take the road show on the road on a tour okay. of Europe or something next summer. I'm, I see you flexing your marketing and promotional ability right here. Thank you. That, that's a great idea. I, I don't know if I would like do it in Airbnbs or something like that. If I'm going to stop and stay in your place, of course, in Isle of Man, I don't know how I would do that, but that could be kind of cool to set up 
different guests to maybe in bigger cities, like go to Berlin or you go to Barcelona or something like that, and then set up guests in each different cities and then do a podcast from location in maybe one of these places. Yeah, maybe you could do that. And that would re-earn you a, a nomination for the American Poker Awards Video Blogger of the Year. <laughs> <You're an adorer. laughs> I didn't know you were kept up so close to the awards, kid. My God, you, you were happy for me when I got nominated for Vlog of the Year with my three vlogs last year, right? Yeah, and this year he only got two. You know Doug Polk, who got three nominations. Are you jealous about that? They hate, listen, they hate Doug. I'm not jealous about the hatred they have for Doug, okay? They don't like Doug at all. So it turns out when you when you put down the uh, biggest the biggest people in poker who are popular and have a lot of friends in the industry and also some of the sites and maybe some of the media companies, people aren't going to like you on the media and industry side of things. So yeah, it turns out that that's not going to get you any friends. So I don't know, Doug, but Doug's, I think Doug's shifting gears. He's changing strategies and he realized that uh, what's going on. So I think he's going to be taking a different tone with his videos and with his viewpoints on things in poker in the foreseeable future. Jeez, that sounds a bit depressing. Sorry. To it, yeah, it does. That. It yeah. does. I, I believe, I believe it, it might, I might've had some impact on that, unfortunately, but, um, but yeah, I don't know. We'll, we'll see exactly what happens with Doug there. And, uh, and yeah, someone said, Marco, Marco Allen says live from Quebec. Fuck it. Live from Quebec. Why not? Anderson Urbano says grinding while watching. This is so good. Thanks for the podcast. Poppy. Much love Anderson. Much love, man. Much love. His crypto podcast is pretty good. GTO Joe says, first of all, great name. Second of all, I agree. Doug's podcast at cryptocurrency is very good. He said the Litecoin founder on the guy founded one of the biggest cryptocurrency coins in the world. I think that is pretty cool to be able to talk to someone who is taken up a Alexander Dreyfus would say an initiative in that space. And uh, what do you think about AD? You, th you ever, you ever communicate with AD Alex Dreyfus, our, our young yeah, well, GPI, yeah. GPL entrepreneur casino uh, industry man? Yeah. Look, he's, uh, he's someone who is such a, a wonderfully uh, spirited person uh, in his, um, you know, entrepreneurial activities. And yeah, I think, yeah, very highly of Alex. How do you think he, he would sell coin? He, how do you think he would sell coin poker to me? Uh, I don't know, but I, I, I think he would do it with a lot less hair um, and to begin with. So between the two of us, between Alex, <laughs> between Alex and I, we have an average amount of hair. Uh, but uh, no, look, I, I look, you know, he's, he's got his own uh, esports blockchain um you know, whatever. I don't know what the, all the jargon words are, but he's got it all happening along. Is he yeah. an entrepreneur? I got to figure out when he started using initiative because I noticed that our young friend David Bezoff also used like also enjoys using the word initiative. So I'm curious if AD was studying the Bezoff tapes and he's like, "All right, Bezoff says initiative. We're going to say initiative with the blockchain <laughs> and the e sports." I'm wondering if he's gonna, you know, I don't know. I'm excited to see what AD comes up with. I know he's in, he's in one of the Asian countries right now, maybe Hong Kong or something like that, on a blockchain initiative. So I think he's a good front guy for your coin. If you want to put a guy out there and you want to gain some, I, I would, I don't know. I love talking to AD. He fires me up all the time. I don't care what he's talking about. I just get fired up talking to him, man. He's he brings that. <laughs> he's he brings, he brings, I don't care what he says. I'm I'm fired up talking to the guy. He just brings the energy to the table. Such a wonderful sense of energy. It's so. French in its wonderfulness. It is quite French. I agree. I, I know you, I, I'm pretty sure you have a lot more experience of French people than I do. I haven't met too many French people, but it seems like they, they have a certain way of themselves. And, um, yeah, I don't know. I don't know. Yeah. Or do you think for, are French and Italian people, are they the same with that attitude that they have? I don't know. I sort of think people are people like there is, uh, there are some, you know, great French people and some great Italian people. And they're all some asshole Italian people, asshole French people. The difference is, is that Italian people always seem to, to me anyway, to put a lot of vowels on the end of words. Um, whereas, you know, whereas in French, there's like whole syllables at the end of words just don't get pronounced. So, yeah, I don't know. Mm. Maybe that was too deep. But uh, um, yeah. the food and the weather in Italy is so much better than the French. Sorry. You have all the pasta. You have the pizza. Um, it's warmer. Oh, yeah. It's, yeah. Yeah, right by Malta. I, I never, I never went to to Italy. I stayed in Malta for a little while, but I never, I did meet a lot of Italian men who were some yeah. of the weirdest people I ever met in my entire life. Uh, shout out to them, of course. But, uh, but I don't know. I feel like I like the French people. I need to go there. I, I, I don't think I've ever actually been to France for for some reason. I don't know. I've been to Belgium a few times, but I've never been to France. So yeah. apparently, Ma Marco, my young, my young Canadian moderator, is also French. So he, uh, we, I do have a French moderator here. So shout out to the French people that are in the yeah. chat. 
I'll be there next week. If anyone's around Chamonix next week uh, from what Thursday to Sunday, come say hi. If you're around where? Ch- Chamonix. It's uh, in the French skiing Alps near the border of Germany. and uh, Not near the Germany, near the border of, uh, of Austria and Switzerland. All right, listen, if some, if one of you guys goes and shows up where Michael just, I don't know where he said that is, if one of you guys actually goes and shows up there and takes a photo with you, with him, I'm going to give you another, I've got a lot of rewards given out here, guys. I've been inspired by the chess program and the, and the loot boxes on Poker Stars, the fucking wheel they have that spins around sometimes. I'm inspired. I'm going to give you guys a reward to spin the wheel or open up a loot box. If you go where Joseph just said, I cannot, rep- I, once again, I don't know where exactly what he even said, but if you go Shemini. there and take a photo with him. Shamanama. Shamanama. Chamonix. Oh, oh, oh. If you go to oh Chama, oh, that that doesn't he spelled it out. I still don't understand it. Chamonix. If you go to Chamonix and you take a photo with Joseph on a mountain, uh, I'm gonna give you a reward. So please, please go do that. Please go do that. I gotta ask. We're gonna ask one about one thing, and then uh, we're gonna wrap it up here. All right. What's uh our, what's the dating life like in Isle of Man, Michael? Uh, I'm going to London in the morning. <laughs> um, no, uh, it's uh, it's small. There are some good people. Um, so one of the things that I think is is weird for me as a as a foreigner who you know grew up in a big city in Melbourne and Sydney and and then moved over here, is that is that the people in the Isle of Man are incredibly, um, I don't know what the right word is, but they don't they don't separate themselves into different groups. And so, for example, if you go to a, a bar in you know take for example London, huge city, big big you know lots of options, different food, different drink, whatever. Um, in London. If you go to a bar, everyone in the bar is going to have similar levels of age, similar levels of education, similar levels of, of income, similar levels of expectation, similar levels of views on the world. Whereas in the Isle of Man, because it is relatively small, it doesn't happen. Um, and so I remember a, uh, uh, I went to a particular bar. It's about 100 metres from my place, maybe 150 metres from my place. So I just walked um, around the bay um, and uh, to this wonderful place. It's called the Saddle Inn. Uh, anyone... You know, any of your viewers in the Isle of Man will know the Saddle Inn. It's like built in or, or opened in 1836, which is as old yeah. as the city of Melbourne is. But um, on Thursday night, they have this wonderful karaoke. It's called um, Saddle Oki. And uh, I remember I was there with a very successful businessman um, at the time. And, you know, I don't know how much he was worth, but, you know, something with eight, eight figures in pounds. So somewhere between 10 million and 100 million pounds. So, you know, a, a guy with a significant degree of net worth and a businessman. Um, and we were there pounding back shots of vodka or whatever it was on a Thursday night, drinking responsibly, of course. Um, of course. But, uh, but then there was this guy across the bar and he heard heard me speak. You know, I, I speak a bit funny, as you might be able to tell. I don't know if you're going to need subtitles uh, for the for the rebroadcast of this. But uh, mm-hmm. uh, And this guy said to me, hey, um, are, you, are you from Australia? And I said, yeah. And, I said, oh, and he said, oh, I've always wanted to go, but I'm not allowed to, which... You know, saying that you're not allowed to go to country is a bit of a weird phrase. I said, oh, how come? And he said, oh, the manslaughter conviction. And and there is, you know, so there I was. It was entirely normal and accessible. I was there at the bar with a guy on one side who's worth, you know, over 10 million quid, uh, and on the other side, some guy with a manslaughter conviction. And let me give you the hot tip. There is no bar in London um, where you can have those two experiences, two people. And so one of the great things about about dating and and people in the Isle of Man is that there's so there's no separation there between you know what different people are and so everyone is in a you know in it together and it's super accessible um, and so I quite like that you know even for me as a foreigner coming inside as a you know as a relative outsider um, you know I'll be I'll be I'll be Manx later this year um, but for the meantime that was that to me was the biggest you know something interesting about about dating in the Isle of Man in the same way that. Um, I read an academic study the other day about Tinder, and it's apparently having similar effects on uh, on interracial marriage in the in the US. In that, that, that there's been a sudden surge because 20, 30 years ago, our parents, or you know, forty years ago, our, our parents' generation, they only only dated and met people in their own pre-existing social circles. Whereas some of this new stuff, you know, people are meet, mixing and, and meeting so many different new people. Um, it's you know changing our society. So that's one of the great things about the Isle of Man is you get to meet different people with different experiences so easily and accessibly. And, you know, you can all, no matter how terrible you are at singing, everyone can stand up at the Saddle Inn on a Thursday night and and do some terrible karaoke. 
So basically what Michael just said is he is playing a very balanced and GTO range when <laughs> he's very wide range. Now, that's what you just said. You said you're, you're, you're it's, it's, it doesn't even, you don't have to do it. It's just Isla man, the way it's structured sets up for you to play a very nice balanced GTO strategy. When it comes to dating, you're able to balance your demographic range. You're able to balance your, your type of women range, nationality range, career range. And yeah, I, I, I enjoy that as well. It sounds like a pretty cool setup. Whereas you mentioned in London, you, if you want to balance your range properly, you have to go to different parts of town, maybe take yeah. different transport, it might take 35 minutes to get there if you fully want to be completely in the whole entire GTO spectrum of ranges in different situations. So <laughs> yeah, I, uh, I I quite like that as well. Very unexploitable. I agree. There is You sure. cannot exploit Michael's approach in Isle of Man. I agree. Yeah. Well, you also don't have a choice, right? So there's only you know half a dozen different bars that are open and... You know, that's an exaggeration, but you know, the point is, is yeah. Yeah, that sounds fun. <laughs> that sounds really fun. <laughs> well, you mentioned what's dating, life, what's dating life in, the, in uh, Las Vegas for, for the puppy? <laughs> <laughs> Slightly different. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> but, you know, I'm just here, man. I'm just here. I'm doing go to work, do my job every day. Mike, I wake up, I, I try to be, try to just take care of myself, take care of myself. And, uh, and yeah, very, uh, yeah, it's interesting. Fun. Yeah. Exciting. Good. 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 Distracting. I can only imagine. Yeah. Very fun. But yeah, you mentioned, actually, you mentioned Tinder and uh, those dating apps. I didn't think about that. I'd be interested to read more about that because you're very, like, that makes sense. And that's the great thing about, about the online dating apps is that you're able to meet people in different demographics that you'll never meet in your entire life. You'll never meet these kind of people, whether it's younger, older, career women, creative people, creative men, whatever it is, you're able to meet such a wide demographic. And as you mentioned, you're able to meet black people, white people, Mexican, and you might not never, you might never go meet any black people. You might never ever meet any Mexican people. So I think that is pretty cool of a thing. And probably it works for the same, like the internationality sort of thing like that, where Maybe you'll meet someone who's visiting from Australia or meet someone who's visiting from Japan and you might never meet these people, but you get to meet them through an app like this. And, and yeah, I think that's a really cool thing that I always advocate for it for people out there to meet people because it's just, you can meet different types of, of, of people out there. You're just, I don't know, you're never going to meet. I find that part very cool for me. That's one of my favorite things about it. Yeah. Check this out. You sent me a link to. A, uh, I'm going to check this. Yeah, out. I was just talking about some some of the data there that uh, that, that shows it. But uh, the um the uh, the thing about the Isle of Man is that you know obviously it's off the coast of halfway between the UK and Ireland, um, and it is not quite so uh, racially um, diverse as it were. And so it's um, you know certainly for me growing up in uh, Melbourne and Sydney, um, you know there was something like in, when I was living in Sydney, something like six different sushi restaurants within a hundred meters of where I lived, whereas you know, it took five years for the first one here in the Isle of Man after I moved here. So, so it's different, but it's um, you know, it's a really good Where'd community. You, what, so. what part of city do you live in? Uh, uh, a suburb called Chatswood, so mm. just north of the city. Mm. Yeah, I lived in the CBD there for like six months, so yeah. I got a little, I got a little exploration of of Sydney in my belt, and I don't plan on going back anytime soon. So, yeah, yeah, yeah. shout out to Sydney for uh, shout out to Sydney, yeah. great, weird Sub Sydney. Community. It's a place, man. But yeah, guys, all right. If you guys want to follow Michael, check him out on Twitter at Michael Josem. If you want to stay in his house, check him out on Twitter at Michael Josem or on Airbnb at the Josem Palace, a.k.a. You got to go back and, and listen to the description. He told you what the description was. If you take a photo with him in his mountain expedition in a place, once again, I cannot understand the name, Shamana, uh, you get to spin the wheel and open up a loot box, Poppy's loot boxes. you be able to open one of those loot boxes as well with a var variety of awards. Uh, Chris M said, this guy could be a double for the most interesting man in the world. I completely agree. We might start that foundation ourselves. And, uh, and yeah, Michael, we appreciate you uh, coming on here. It's very nice to actually, we, we've kind of communicated off and on for a long time. It's very nice to actually have a, uh, it's one of the great things about the podcast. They will have a conversation with somebody who I'm very interested in talking with, but for whatever reason, you just, you don't get to have those conversations or you just don't pursue those. So very fun to have it on here. Hopefully people out there enjoyed and, uh, and yeah, man, back tomorrow night with uh, David Peters, tournament player. And then next week, we'll be putting out a bunch of videos related to the ACR stuff, a couple podcasts, and uh, and that's it, man. Guys in the chat, Harbs, Connie Dobbs, Amino, Jubilino, GTO Joe, <laughs> Ray Ann. And uh, yeah, man, thanks for all the comments, questions out there, guys. Very much appreciated as always. And uh, yeah, see you guys soon. Peace out. Adios. Much love. See you later.